Hello, everybody. David Zeritsky for The Bond Experience. Welcome to our cocktail hour. We are setting up the technology. How are we looking, Rem? Are we on? Um, almost. Do we have a little delay with Oh, oh, there we go. There okay, we go. good, good. There is going to be a delay. There's always like a little delay. I'm setting up the technology. We thought we were going to do this through YouTube. We ain't. <laughs> well, we are, but um, not through my computer. So um, get comfy. We're going to be doing this on the fly, so to speak. Remind you of any event. <laughs> and we've got Joe Darlington. And we've got Remert. How you guys doing? Good. We good. are good. Celebrating Friday night. We are sure. celebrating, aren't we? All right, I'm gonna be pulling us back for a second. You guys talk to the crowd. Who do we have coming up here? Well, we have um, some discussions about uh, what we have been doing today. Uh, we went to Spice Cape in New York, which was great fun. Um, we've been at an Order Bar Brown event yesterday, which we can tell you a little bit about, not too much. Um, and just general Bond 25 speculation. Yeah, it's going to be everything and anything. Good morning from Brisbane, Australia. And by the way, thank you for doing this already. Um, what we'd love everybody to do, the usual, and is to, to um, actually start to talk to us about where you're all from. Um, because we're all from different parts of the world. Let's look at these comments on. I can't get the comments on somehow. Um, um, Turn it this way. Turn it that way. Turn it the other way. I don't know. That's okay. Joe can see them. Yeah, yeah, you want to yeah. be our MC if, if sure. for questions, Joe? Good so, evening from Delaware, USA. What's up, Bud West? <laughs> By the way, I hope everybody knows. Um, let me just turn this a little bit. Uh, Remert and Joe. Let me, for all of you kind of signing in, just to make sure that you know who you're talking to tonight and having cocktail hour with. And by the way, I hope you have a drink, gentlemen. Should we show everybody what we Absolutely. have? We have, um, it's just plain. It's icy, cold vodka. Should we take a sip? Cheers. 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 I mean, it's cocktail hour. Cheers, guys. Great to see you. Cheers to you at home. Mmm. Delicious. Mm. Um, let me just talk a little bit about the gentleman on the couch tonight. This is a big deal. From all over the world, just like you're from all over the world, um, we have Remert. Uh, Remert started uh, ages ago, James Bond Lifestyle. Um, it's become an incredible hub of information. I think the hub, quite frankly, for okay. brand and lifestyle. I mean, it, it is the go-to, it's the benchmark. I think um, we all kind of emulate certain aspects of it. Mm -hmm. um, but Remert, how would you describe uh, James Bond lifestyle? Um, it's really like a, yeah, a guide to people that want to live the lifestyle um, in a very practical sense of um, mostly Material stuff, yeah. products, uh, wear, what Bond is wearing, uh, drive, what Bond is driving, go where Bond is going. Um, that's not main the focus, but the products. And I guess, you know, the general um, news, but mostly related about collecting, auctions, new product releases. Locations, you do everything. There's actually. some locations as well. Yeah. yeah. But uh, I mean, yeah, um, not the expert in that. But, uh, yeah. no, so it's, it's, it's yeah. Allowing people to live out their uh, their dream in a sense of uh, living like Bond. It's true. Um, and try to be as precise as possible, and try to give the people you know the exact details of what they uh, what they yeah. Give the people to. what they want, like Elliot Carver. Yep. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and by the way, you, you notice there's a theme here because over to my left here, you're right, um, is Joe Darlington from Being James Bond. This is a group of gents who. Um, it's living like Bond. It's that, you know, we all kind of create those experiences, whether it's, you know, learning the skills of being like Bond or the lifestyle aspects of being like Bond or the experiences of Bond. And tell us about being James Bond. Being James Bond, been around for 12 years now. And I gotta say, before we get off, remember, by the way, oh, I have to say, I mean, like his site has, has always been like a, a benchmark for me. I mean, I, I remember going long before I had being James Bond, the Bond lifestyle was there. Uh, Kyle, by the way, just said I would describe the Bond lifestyle as the Bible. So yes. there's, there's a ringing endorsement. That's uh, also actually wait, how what I is that? Him, by the way, what does that make him? Uh, I, don't know. <laughs> I don't know. The Messiah he's, of uh, so Bond lifestyle. No, no religion and politics. That's the rules. <laughs> that's true. That's the rules. That's, the rules. Yeah. Yeah. that's actually how I met you. Come to think of it, because I remember you were writing articles for Bond lifestyle, doing your frugal Bond stuff, and I think that's I, how I, I was. Yep. 
I started um, doing, I mean, I don't know if a lot of people know this, but I started doing videos. As well, videos, mm -hmm. yeah. On, started, yeah, you started the videos on the, on the website. I did, yeah. I yeah. did. Yeah. And we I, all met on the, at AJB, of course, AJB. That's right. I mean, maybe there's people from AJB mm. as we speak. There might be. Um, so I think it's also a, definitely a source of, of where this all came from, is, is, is the, the collecting part of that, of that forum, which is still, you know, yes. alive and kicking. Um, so, yeah, big props to all the people from that forum Absolutely, that, 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 yeah. that are, you know, where the, where the core core knowledge was and, you know, sort of is, and is, you know, bringing all these uh, identifications for products out. But, and, uh, but now that you've given enough enough emulation to him, what yeah. is being James Bond? <laughs> oh. I'm going to get our little uh, cheat sheet here. <laughs> Keep going. Describe, describe. Oh, you guys know being James Bond. If you're here, you know being James Bond. Uh, yeah, going on the 13 years-ish. Uh, mm. Volume 1 is already out. Volume 2 is on its way. Uh, you know, videos, podcasting for ages. Scott and I, by the way, just finally did our test run, so we're gonna go back and do some more uh, review videos, which I'm very excited to do. Mm. So it's gonna be good stuff. We haven't done that in, in ages. Yeah, no, that's gonna be cool. That's yeah. gonna be good. All right, since you have good. the phone, can you read some of the people that have uh, dialed in? I sure can. Peter mm. Knight, Kyle B, T M Martin, Marvin 007, Bon Armory. What's up, Ray? <sighs> Uh, Bud West, the Urban Gentry. How's it going, guys? John Edwards is checking in. Good to see you, John. Oh, really? John Edwards? Yep, he's here. I know him. Uh, we got people from Brazil. I saw Ireland all over the place. Nice. Brazil, I saw Ireland. He, he yeah, got right <laughs> uh, Yeah, Connecticut, North Carolina. Good crew, good North crew. Carolina. Anyone from any European country? It's pretty late there. It's like, you know, where I'm from. It's... it's Midnight there, so if you're up, I mean, yeah, bless you for watching. Um, Chicago, we got people definitely from the U.S. here. I just, I just got a major cheat sheet here. I got my ah. computer, so we can ah, actually, oh, cool. look at that. Ah, that the vodka like looks good, guys. What brand? All right. You know what? It is not a Bond brand. It is Tito's. <laughs> it is, no, stop oh, it. Tito's <laughs> is great because it's the... It's the vodka that doesn't give you a hangover because it's distilled like oh, yeah, 19 times. Yeah, you're right. That's How the reason why dare you? you. <laughs> By the way, uh, Bud West is drinking a Crown Royale bourbon mash. Ooh. What? Interesting. interesting. Goldfinger, anyone? <laughs> uh, the Edwards evening, right. guys. Good to see the three together at last. That's mm. John Edwards. There you go. We know that boy. Mm. Yeah, we know him. Yeah. John Edwards. Unbelievable. What's up, John? We've got Phil Harris from the UK. Chris says Tito's is a great vodka. Not a cocktail here, but who's drinking Red Stripe? Says Percy. Oh, there you mm. go. So that's a good question. What are we all drinking out there? Yeah, what, we want to hear about that. Yeah, what's everybody's Friday night looking like? That's right. And by the way, we wanted to do this. This was, mm -hmm. this was a cool discussion. Um, you know, Joe, we wanted to visit with him. Um, I, I can't get him out of the zip code, <laughs> try as I might. And he heard that Rimmert was in town. But how long has it been since the two of you guys have seen each other? Ages. So... Yeah, we, we think it might have been eight years since um, the Bahamas mm -hmm. cruise from uh, the Skillman tour, basically. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah, which actually you were on as well, which yep. also didn't end up in the Bahamas due to a hurricane. Right, right. Yeah. Um, it was yeah. a great tour nonetheless. Oh my God, it was great. We had we had several, we actually had several days in New Orleans. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then the cruise oh, yeah. ship yeah. went to uh, Key West. Yep. And because of the hurricane, we got ended up in Mexico before that. And I ended up doing several more days in New Orleans because because of the hurricane, I couldn't get home. <laughs> oh, yeah, those two people were stuck in New Orleans. I forgot about that. I, 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 Anders was yeah. there for it was. I was yeah, in Anders' true. room for a couple, at least a couple of days. Yeah. Who, who here is sorry that they asked? <laughs> I, by the way, I roomed with Joe. This is way too much. You guys didn't sign in for this. <laughs> I'm telling you, it was like someone pouring gravel over a chainsaw. <laughs> I've never heard anything like that. Don't ask. By the way, we've got people drinking Duke's martinis right now oh, in nice. the UK. Nice. Nice. Jason. Sadowski, our good friend Jay out there. Sorry, Jay, about the shirt. Uh, we're going to get into the, the whole uh, Spyscape shirt issue. we got a lot of topics to cover tonight. <laughs> get, get comfortable and get a lot of drink. Um, speaking of that, let's open it up a little bit with mm -hmm. what everybody's been doing. What And let's keep it Bond, because they're, they're sick of talking about our snoring habits. <laughs> Joe, yeah. anything Bond you've been up to lately? Uh, well, Bond 25 Fitness Challenge. Been, uh, been on it. I'm... I'm Ooh. Lost a couple LBs, so I'm happy about that. I've still nice. got a long way to go, but uh, but been at it, been at it pretty. Your faithfully. food choices look amazing. Yeah, there you go. Food, my food choices. Uh, Dave, Dave's getting a little tired looking at my uh, dinner choices. I have to interrupt because yeah. Kevin Rogers said, "Good for you." 
Thank you. Coming to you from my gym, listening while I work on the Bond body. I Kevin! Know. That's good. That's how you do dude, it. Dude, don't get off that treadmill, <laughs> I assume. It's a treadmill. That's how you do it. Yeah. That's, that's a good thing. But that's been watch. a big adventure for you, is oh, to, yeah. to transform your yeah, body. Yeah. Mm. Exactly. It's, it's, yeah, it was, it was weird kind of just getting into that situation where I like, let, I kind of let things go for a little too long. But, uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited. You know, I'm at that, that moment where, like, you know, you're in that first thrush of, yes. like, oh my God, I kind of feel like myself again a little bit. So, yeah, it's, it's like I said, just at the beginning, but it's going. Uh, and planning out some videos and podcasts, a lot of travel things planned. You've just done some uh, incredible videos mm -hmm. on your YouTube, which is YouTube. Yeah. I think your YouTube is on fire. You, you, What I like about it is you do a lot of videos that are very digestible. Like, I'll, I'll do some like 45 minutes and it's like, all right, let me go to the bathroom beforehand. <laughs> but, but you've done a couple like uh, homages, mm -hmm. haven't you? Yeah, I kind of, they. It's, it's funny, I, I, I don't seem to know the, the perfect medium for length. Mm. I, they're either too long or they're just kind of quick down and dirties. Um, so we had a couple occasions recently to do some short videos. We lost a couple of Bond actresses, so I did a little yeah. homages to those. Uh, but yeah, no, it's a little, couple longer ones, um, and I got a big one coming out next week. Next, uh, I'm gonna do Skyfall Revisited. This is one that Scott and I what? did, kind of, which is sort of good because it kind of getting back into the swing of things. Uh, again, going back to the movie reviews. Again, we're gonna count down all the Bond films leading up to Bond 25. Yeah. So this was one that we did, and, and I'm really happy with it. So it's a nice in-depth look at, you know, kind of going back to Skyfall. Mm -hmm. And uh, does it work? Does it not work? Obviously it works, but uh, why does it work? Nice. So yeah, so I'm happy with that. I like those, like, really, like, respective stuff that you can just mm -hmm. go back in time and yeah, yeah. take a look at it. So, Rammer, you, you've, had a, you've had an interesting 36 hours. <laughs> yeah. yeah anything did. interesting? I don't know. What? Uh, yeah, no, we did great stuff. I oh. flew over here. Um, that was great. Was welcomed by you, which was great. Shocker uh, in your car, and we. Wait, off. I picked you up in style. I know, really in style. We weren't sure that um, I took the fun car, and we weren't sure if his luggage was actually going to fit. That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That it's was... the first luggage that's ever been in that car. Two bags and they fit. It's a very practical car. It's a very practical. Despite car. Despite what people yeah. think. No. Yeah. So, um, what happened after that? Um. Well, we had a great time here. We had some little, a little, um, you know, uh, tour of your collection, which yeah. is very impressive and always super interesting, always changing. So um, great to see all the extreme, you know, details that you uh, collect. The marketplace, and, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah it's shameful. So that was really fun. And we um, yesterday, oh, yeah, yesterday we went to New York. Yes. Um, pretty early to meet up with the people from Order Bar Brown. That was cool. That so was we, got a, we got a private session with the founder mm -hmm. and um, Edward Davies, who yeah. oversees all the marketing. The marketing, head of marketing. In, in their showroom, which was really cool. Yeah. And they were sharing some stuff about the new upcoming 007 collection. Yeah. Uh, phase two. You know what I liked about one of the things they said, which really has less to do with the collection, more to do with people watching right now, mm -hmm. is they're really very passionate about Bond. Yeah. Like it's yeah. not just a transactional thing. Yeah. Um, if you heard the words that we heard, um, they wanted to make sure that phase two was something that people would connect with, yeah. would really embrace. And I think even us being there and, and connecting with Reverend and I, who I think have been good supporters of the brand mm -hmm. throughout the years, um, it means a lot to them. Yeah. And you can see the passion. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, uh, Bond was um, the founder, Adam Brown, told us as well that, that James Bond, especially part of, was part of his mood board. When he started the brand, even. that's right. Um, like it's 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 that's why the 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 the, the, the match is is, is is seamless because it's it is. Know, they basically yeah are the same style, so it's a very easy uh, easy fit. Easy fit. And by the way, there's questions already coming around that. Mm. Um, can you please tell me when the All of Our Brown collection is out? Jane Zell is asking. Is it May fifteenth? Yeah, 14 or 15, if I'm actually. Fourteenth or fifteenth. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, we should explain something. Um, uh, I'm sure we're going to be talking about the party that we went to, the celebration. Yeah, yesterday um, night. Yep, all of our brand. Yeah. We we are not going to be posting pictures or videos until um, May fifteenth, give or take, because we uh, we've been asked to keep those things to ourselves mm. uh, for now to enjoy them. There was one night of uh, interest and craze, and everybody hopefully mm -hmm. went to all of our brand and got in their. Uh, email list, but 
For now, we won't be posting pictures. No, no, unfortunately. But what, tell me about the event. What do you think? What did you think of the event? Um, the event was in a cool location. It was a um, relatively cozy townhouse mm. in the middle of uh, Soho, um, called uh, World of Macintosh. Macintosh. Um, Macintosh. Yes. Uh, Macintosh house equipment. or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Macintosh, some kind of audio. <laughs> but it was very cozy, and they had like uh, crazy enough, like a sort of pool inside the house. Um, where basically all of our brown models were walking around. Yes. Uh, Including the man with the golden gun safari shirt jacket, which uh, yeah. I see is some is people's favorite. Kyle B. Oh, yeah. yeah exactly. Says, I'm all over that. Yeah. The man with the golden gun safari shirt jacket. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is very cool. It was cool. What was yeah. your favorite piece that you saw? Like you could run out of the building with something in your hand. Um, it's a tough one. It's a tough one, yeah. I mean, Pretty basic. I would like. I actually like the pink shirt from uh, Thunderball. Yeah. Uh, with the sort of white, you know. Uh, I love that color. Too. It's a simple shirt, but it's a it's a really nice one. Um, yeah. And I think it combines really well with their shorts, like a blue shorts or the. I uh, agree. I, I I have to tell you, mine and we're coming to you, so start thinking next. <laughs> the Thunderball polo, the very simple blue band oh, yeah, the, polo. Yeah, yeah. I love, but then I can't choose that one as my favorite because it's too easy because. Of course, I'm gonna like a blue polo. Have you seen my last video? <laughs> but um, the one that I think I would run out of the room with if I could is the um, Diamonds Are Forever Sean Connery mm. uh, so beige polo. Yeah. Style polo. Yes, uh, yeah. I yeah. love yeah. that thing and the piling and everything on it mm. was just perfect. Yeah, that's was the original one. What, what were you one. attracted to? I, I, I loved all of them. I loved the uh, the Dr. New, Dr. No light blue polo, mm -hmm. which I thought was terrific. And there was one yes. that was like a salmon color. And I, I'm trying to remember oh, what that was from now. Uh, that's the one I think you were talking about. The pink. It was yeah, like the pink. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that's a really, really nice, really nice looking. I mean, I, I was yeah. kind of blown away by all of it. Tell you the truth. Uh, Max is asking, um, was the Majesty's Secret Service tuxedo shirt more of a linen casual shirt? Which is correct. It's definitely more casual. Uh, it's linen. Um, they really made it interesting, I think, because it, it it actually does work as a sort of casual shirt. For beachwear or poolside, you know, um, hmm. it was. Uh, you know what that reminded me of was the uh, remember the promo shots of Daniel Craig from Casino Royale. Yes, oh, they yeah. did over yeah. the, the Ocean Club. Yep. Yeah, yeah, reminded me of that. Yeah, one. it's like that. Very yeah, see through. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. it works. I think because it's a shirt, but it's definitely more casual. It's definitely yeah. not a real dress shirt. We're outvoted, guys, because no. everybody's saying the Goldfinger Romper, the Bond Armory, White <laughs> Nance, okay, Mr. Yeah, PH yeah. Thirty, Aaron Dishko. <laughs> I get it. The Goldfinger <laughs> Romper, but we all agree. Well, I, I mean, give, I get props that they did it to make it. They yeah, did it. I mean, that's, yeah. that's definitely you know. Uh, then now you've got to you yeah. got to get the amount of bravery to to, to put it on and go to yeah. a pool and wear it. I just asked Mary. I said, "You're not you're not going to get me that for Christmas." I mean, that it was so obvious. All right, be honest. Would you wear it? Uh, well, w would I oh. wear it? Sure. Where would I wear it? That that's... Like you would wear it in public? I would. Yeah. I would. Right. I mean, I, I, you know, I, why not? I sure would. Work out it's, the legs a little bit. Yeah, there you go. That's no, okay. Guess, would you wear it in public? Well, like I said, we, we were actually discussing earlier, like, where, where even do you start wearing that? You, like, like Bond, you first go out swimming, I guess, and then after your swim, you, I guess you put it on or something, and then you... Yeah, it's like a guess, throw or something it's like a, like Yeah, that. and then you walk back to your hotel room or something like that. And I, I, guess, I, I guess you could wear it for that. Like, that would, that would make sense. But to really prance around in it all the time would maybe be weird. It's really well, like, I think the three of us have to go down to the Fountain Blue in Miami, and all three of us should be wearing that number. <laughs> okay, so that's the problem. We like, should all, all three of us from, like, three different doorways come and just descend in the same spot wearing the same thing. I think yeah. it's a classy romper until the three of us walk out together. <laughs> You screwed it up. <laughs> By the way, Jay Sadowski says he's wearing mine right now, and Lloyd Nance says I would for sure. There you I'm go. glad that there's other there you go. No, people it, out there. It was, they made it wearable, I think, the, the way it looked. They did. And they did still make it pretty um, accurate with the belt uh, and the buckle. And uh, the, 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 mm. the pants it looks were, right. The pants were slightly longer. Yeah, agreed. Because the Connery ones are, are I think, very short. Very actually. short. Actually, it was almost well, nothing. But, so know. the founder spent a lot of time with us even last night. And one of the mm -hmm. things he said was, this is not supposed to be cosplay. It's not supposed to no, be, no. I took it from the movie and replicated it for mm -hmm. you guys. He yeah. said, I wanted to take it, put it through a filter of modern mm -hmm. wear, yeah. modern men's yeah. wear. So yeah. when you put it through modern men's wear, you do things, you, you change the pile texture, you change the length, you change all these things. Um, Urban Gentry says, outstanding, I assume like Sean Connery. <laughs> and by the way, Urban Gentry said he wants a wristwatch check, please. Okay. Um, mm. Planet Ocean from Casino Royale, Omega. Uh, I'm not sure which Omega this is, Tantra. Let me see. Oh, uh, yeah. 
Uh, it looks like a limited edition. Oh, wait, yeah. isn't it one yeah. from... Hmm. Yeah, I think so. Limited edition Omega. <laughs> this is a limited edition, the fossil one that I've been posting sometimes on Instagram. Yep. It's kind of one of my, I kind of like it. Like it has like sort of a fake sort of, you know, uh, world time thing, but it's um, has a double seven logo. It's, it's, it's worth it. I like it. Nice. By the way, we do not have support in this last conversation from Bud West, who says my wife would have too much fun at my expense if I wore that. And, uh, to yeah. get it. My, yeah. 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 Mary would have Mary would have a ball if I wore that, but I, I would do it anyway. <laughs> it was very good. But they treated us really well. They uh champagne, Bollinger, they had Bollinger champagne yeah. flowing. Yeah. Yeah. They had martinis Cocktails. being shaken. Yeah. Amazing food. Like they had um James Bond quail eggs on like yeah. these little crackers. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but one of the coolest fun. things I thought was they had a live string orchestra yeah. playing yeah. James yeah. Bond yeah. themes. Yeah, yeah. And the audio um, of the, the sound oh. quality was really good because the, it was really immense for uh, audio equipment, that whole you know space. Yeah. So the sound was amazing, and um, yeah, the, the atmosphere was was yeah. Yeah. Well and I'm hoping May fifteenth. Uh, hopefully, thanks to Joe's amazing co-editing skills, I should call them senior editing skills. Um, we're gonna have an amazing vlog because we were able to do interviews with people. We got really like hero hero shots, very mm -hmm. very close to the product. We unfortunately can't release the video now, but when we can you're gonna love it because it's mm -hmm. like i think it's gonna get everybody very excited yeah mm -hmm. uh for those things definitely yeah. um but it's we still have, a long wait this is kind of uh, it is a long way yeah, yeah. yeah we just yeah how are we gonna how are we gonna survive yeah, okay. <laughs> well time for the wear to get warmer and uh wear <laughs> stuff um by the way uh that would have been enough but we wound up doing something this morning and that was a return to spyscape now you've never been to spyscape no no for me it's you've been time. to spyscape yep yeah enjoy it what did you guys think? You want to well, go since you're brand spanking now? Yeah, it's still in my, uh, you know, I'm, in still, your I'm, still, I'm still wearing the, the golden, uh, the golden entry, mm -hmm. uh, the VIP <laughs> entry uh, wristband, the 007 logo. Um, yeah, we mostly focused on the 007 driven part of Spyscape, because yep. Spyscape is basically a whole museum. Um, and now there's like a James Bond driven, yep. driven. Aston yep. Martin DB5 section, mostly DB5 focused, I yep. guess. Mm. Because of course they bought the GoldenEye DB5 last year at an auction, and well, the I think the it was amazing how they set it up. Like the, the whole the whole experience is really is really immersive. You go in, you from the first seconds you you feel the Bond music, the world, you know, the lighting, mm -hmm. uh, really well set up. Lots of details, uh, focus focusing on the details of the Aston Martin, like the gadgets. Are, are beautifully displayed in an in original way with like sort of replicas yeah, yeah. showing what actually is inside the Aston Martin. Yeah. Yeah. Replica of, of the, uh, mm -hmm. and, and drawings of what the original drawings were from the 60s. And mm -hmm. how many people were in the 007 part? <clears throat> Zero, just us. <laughs> it was just us! It was the coolest thing. By the way, we need to say thank you to Ian Oldeker, the operations mm -hmm. manager of Spyscape for setting this yeah. up. Yeah. We walked in and there was a guard and that's it. And literally we, it was so easy to take well, pictures. Well, I'm not, I'm not sure if we should give that tip, but I, I would I would give the tip basically to go in first oh. to the 007 uh, section if mm. you were yeah. out. Like just say you you know you want to um, because you're a Bond fan, and then basically all the other people first go through the whole Spicecape, and yes. then you go to 007. In, in, you're that in Bud Europe. West. I know you're going in the fall. <laughs> Go in the morning. Go in the morning and go to Double O Seven. Then do Spicecape. And by the way, they'll tell you go Spicecape first. Don't listen. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, sorry. Exactly, yeah. Just say like you've already been to Spicecape for a couple months. Like I just got yes. the bomb stuff or something like that. But yeah, yeah, yeah. That, and that would be definitely. You've had a couple of weeks in Spicecape. Yeah. I mean, what yeah. what what's resonating with you now? One of the things that I really loved about it was the idea. Again, it's it really is sort of like a love letter to the DB Five. Yeah, you know, like exactly, a nice yeah, a nice yeah. tribute to the DB Five. Mm -hmm. And I love the way they set it up because they get into very they spent a lot of time doing like schematics and videos on, on how the, yeah, yeah. the gadgets Animations would work. Amazing, yeah. And it was almost like mm -hmm. it was just a given that these gadgets work. That yeah. there are machine guns in this in this in yeah. the headlights. That yeah. there are You love that too. Yeah. So yeah. so yeah. it just it just it just sort of showed you exactly how it works as if this was a completely re real car yeah. that, that had all the gadgets yeah. fully operational. It was amazing. Yeah. And also what is also amazing is like the car itself, the real yeah. DB five movie, you know, screen used GoldenEye DB5, yeah, yeah. standing in the middle of the room, yeah. no wires around, no fences, like you basically can put your head inside, like see the Bollinger bottle in the middle mm -hmm. of the console. Oh, that was so cool. Amazing, like it's, a, and they put like little lights in it, so the lights are a little bit on, you know, so it feels like an, a live car that you yeah. can actually, you know, it's right there, yeah. so it's, it's and, amazing. And Remmer um, has already posted some pictures, I posted some pictures, and I think you may wind up even doing an article on James Bond Lifestyle. 
Yes? Yes, I'm definitely going to write about it now. So, I mean, if you want to hear more and connect with more, by the way, and this is totally fine because this is this is happy hour. This is cocktail hour. So we don't want to be like over regimented with like, oh, no, next topic. So we are getting a lot of questions still on the all of our brown stuff. For yeah. example, um, you know, uh, I'd actually, Kevin says, I'd actually been hoping for the blue Thunderbolt trunks yeah. on reward with the blue gingham camp shirt. And there they were. Yeah. So it, it was amazing to see that. And by the way, one of the cool things about all of our brown is they're like, this is... This is phase two. Who's to say we're not going to have phase three, mm -hmm. phase four? Phase That's true. Yeah, yeah. So if you yeah, haven't yeah, seen yeah. something that you yeah. want, yeah, exactly. raise yeah. your yeah. hand. Yeah. yeah. No, that's true. Yeah. yeah. They, they did already take out a lot of the, the classics, but I'm sure you know there's way more classics to, uh, to be done if they, uh, if they want to, if this one, of course, works yeah. out. Yeah. Um, and by the way, yeah. one of the biggest things, because we, we have a thread around the Olivar Brown rent on AJB. One of the most active posts is, thank God they're bringing the Skyfall shorts back. Mm. The Skyfall, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, oh, yeah, everybody's yeah. wanted that. Yeah. I see that Matt Paulson, for example, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, says, yeah. I'll take the Skyfall shorts. Yeah. They were so excited. One of the coolest things is um, Danielle and I, when we were videoing the vlog last night, we went down, they had this pool area, and you probably may have seen a, a picture on my Instagram. They were taking professional shots of a model mm -hmm. wearing those on the edge of the pool, just like in Skyfall, oh, yeah, when he cool. was yeah, done swimming. Yeah, it was so, kind of yeah. cool too. It, it felt like that. It was smaller, but it was felt that kind of yeah. Cool. yeah. Now, 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 there is somebody raising their hand. I have to acknowledge John Simmons because he has an amazing idea for all of our brown. Q's pineapple shirt from Thunderball. <laughs> Thank you. Love it. Yes. Oh my god. Absolutely. <laughs> that is so logical. Oh my, god. <laughs> oh my god. And by the way, a couple people are saying the Doctor No bat, uh, bathrobe is really cool. What you didn't see is in the bathrobe on the lapel here, mm. it actually says pro um, property of Dr. Julius No. Oh, nice. And then Crab Key underneath it. Very cool. Yeah. Like yeah. a hotel, like yeah, if you were to nice. steal nice. a bathrobe from. Oh yeah. my God, that's great. Every, every item also comes with a side, a side little tag. Oh, that's cool. Double seven logo, double yeah. seven logo, and on the other side, all of our brown. Nice. Just a little, uh, you know, detail. I got, when I was watching, I, you know, I, I, I honestly, I mean, I've seen their stuff before, and when I remember when I saw the first trunks with the prints on it, I was like, oh, it's, it's, yeah, it's really cool. But I swear to God, I, I, when I saw some of the stuff that they had there, I was just like, like, they got my money. They, they just got my money. Like, I, yeah. like I'm already, like, I'm already sold. I, I don't think I've ever seen anything that, that so quickly. I was like, I have to have that. Yeah. Well, we also, it's also definitely, it's a unique thing. Like, uh, mm. the, the, what they set up here, like, like, I mean, it's an official, um, you know, collaboration. Yeah. It's a, you, it's a, Relatively big collection. It's not just one piece or you know like a pro bag or like a the the one off Sunspell you know shorts that were not actually bomb. Yeah. But it's like a real you know it's a whole yes collection that's really mm -hmm. thought out and complete uh, with even eight, retail. Yeah. Um, they're gonna have special like retail, retail hangers yeah, yeah, and yeah. things with 007. By the way, Kyle B, I love this one. I I want this too, Kyle. Uh, how about that sweet lemon dressing gown with red piping? That Roger Moore wears in Live oh, yeah. and Die. Yeah. I'd wear the hell out of that with my coffee and Sunday papers. Oh, yeah. the, we need the, yeah, J, the JB. Uh, the JB thing. Yeah, Come on. Definitely. Yeah. Um, Good one. Also, somebody says, what about in volume three, uh, the shirt? Uh, oh, it's Kyle again. Uh, who, the, the, the shirt he wears, the High Fats House. Do you remember that? Travel the shirt he wears, the High Fats House. Is that where he shows the third nipple? <laughs> oh, okay. What if they sold in the pocket of that shirt that he pulled out <laughs> a third nipple? Wait a minute. Hold on a second. You can wear a onesie, but you can't put a third nipple on your chest? <laughs> Who are you? Who it's, are it's you? It's a little kinky. Uh, well, we can even get into like the other characters, too, because this is, I think, this is all Bond stuff, right? Yeah, this is all Bond. Yes. Uh, you could go into other characters as well, you know, any iconic... Uh, Sure, that's true. You know, yeah, yeah. It could go much broader. Mm -hmm. That's that's very true. Oh, there you go. With uh, for when they do the third round, Bond girl stuff. Well, yeah. Well, uh, girl. I don't think now, I now here's a little something. I don't know if you remember this, but all of our brown did do a women's line yeah. a while ago. I don't know if it didn't do well or or what it was, but they did it for like one season. I don't mm -hmm. know if it was an experiment, and they never did it again. So I don't know. I mean, that would be cool if they did mm. that, but mm. I could see somebody else taking that. Now. Okay. Somebody says, uh, as a woman, the La Perla Gucciola Perla, Gu Gu Perla blue swimming trunks as a remake. I guess that would be a, definitely a popular one. Um, the La Perla ones, yeah. It's also something they don't really offer. Like, we, we were a little bit surprised about, you know, because what, what's great about the La Perlas, in a way, is that they're so, you know, tight and short, which is very, you know, European kind of 
you know. Yes. But for women, you know, this is like what she said, like it's a great, you know, item. But like, but but Oliver Brown is a little bit on the safe side, I think. Yes. With mm. making things almost even longer instead of shorter, you know. So they, they do have some really. I, I actually like the new, the new, there, the new yeah there is something that's short but you're right I think that's more on guard so and I think that's very cultural too because mm -hmm. I think in the United States it would be very difficult to go down to the Jersey Shore and wear the La Perla shorts mm -hmm. without an eyebrow being raised mm -hmm. but you're from Brooklyn clearly with that accent um, <laughs> and in Brooklyn could they wear those shorts yeah. Probably. <laughs> well, in Miami, yeah, they could do it. I mean, there's, there's places. Miami, yeah. definitely yeah. they could do that. Yeah. Yeah. All right, yeah. so we'll save those That's for... A, it's a, it's mm. a good one to remake, for sure. TM Martin says, very European indeed. Yeah. <laughs> LOL, which I assume means laugh out loud. <laughs> I'm 51. I have no idea. I'm pretty happy with my Sunspell Thunderbolt shorts, to be honest, and they're cheaper. Joseph, I like the Thunderbolts, yeah, no. uh, the, the Sunspell uh, yeah. shorts, too. Yeah, the material was great. And it, yes. looked really vintage. it looked more vintage, I think, than, than probably the Sunspell... Some of the sun, oh, sorry, some of the auto bar browns. Yes, yeah, um, yeah. Because the sun spells actually look original, you know, um, vintage, but yeah. I agree. All right, so then we, we went out for a nice Mexican meal and then we ran onto the train because we had to meet Joe. And that brings us back to all of you guys. <laughs> yeah, and now we're having a great conversation. We are having a great yeah, conversation. Great keep, time, great drink. Keep the questions coming. We're going to keep refilling and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, we have to, uh, and we probably should, shoot an elephant in the room. Not literally. Don't worry, people out there, lovers of animals. Um, but you, you've you heard this probably before that the three of us and actually many other people that have uh, websites and blogs and blogs have decided it's a purely individual choice not to post uh, pictures or videos that were illegally obtained, um, not to reveal spoilers unless... Um, there's something, a picture or a product that Eon has released or a brand has released. We can't avoid them all. I'm sure we're not going to avoid them all. It might be hard to always upkeep, but it's definitely yes. going to be the intention mm. to... Um, well, I think my, my, my main thing would at least to be uh, of keep social media clean. Because social media you can avoid, you know, like mm. you're just scrolling yeah. and you, you get that video. Like, you mm. know, we got like two weeks that's ago. That's a good point. That, that's in your face. Like, that's that's mean, you know, like people, you can't, you can't prepare for that. You know? Yes. But if you say like, okay, you know, go to the website on your own risk, you know, it's going to be spoilers. Like, yeah. otherwise, it's one step. Yes. And then the website, again, like you don't get it right in your face. You have to, you know, scroll through it or something. So it's definitely going to be trying to keep at least the uh, blatant spoilers in your face away. Um, plus, you know what you said, like illegally obtained or, you know. Uh, yeah, those, that's, like, that's kind of insidious when yeah, they do that. No, and yeah, people yeah. have gone to like really incredible lengths and you, yeah. you seem to have done the same thing. Oh yeah, I, I, I absolutely will not put any kind of spoilers. I, I, and I was I was very surprised. Like, I, you know, I, I just opened up an email, like Twitter sends me like, um, like what you might have missed this week. Oh, yeah, 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 exactly, yeah. And I remember I opened the email and it was like, all the shots from the video. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. what if I didn't want to see this? Yeah, no. Okay. So yeah, I I am extremely conscious of it. I think the spy the spy command handled it great. They did it like a mm. newsletter blast, just saying like this happened this week and there was a, there was a video. If you want to see it, you can click yeah. here. But yeah, right. it wasn't right no. there in the. No. That's a great point, Joe. Giving people choices. Yeah, this should be the mm. choice. I know Ed yeah. Swain yeah. down here, for example, says Eon's past trailers. Have had too many spoilers. I agree. Let's face yeah, it. Yeah, we're yeah. we're going to. But we were just talking. We were about talking about that. yesterday. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like it shows the whole film. We yeah, know it's a much. Bond film. Yeah. You don't have to show right. too much action. And then Ruben says, "Come on, man. How do I need to wait for next year for Bond twenty five? So yeah. you've got one extreme and the other yeah. of making those choices. Yeah. Mm. But I agree that actually the official, even the official releases last last time, Spectre were were just like there were so many on their own social media. Mm. Um, besides even the videos, but also just the photographs and the behind the mm -hmm. scenes and whatever, you know, like it, 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 it was almost too much because I think there was no scene or outfit that was yeah. not published before. No, like, there yeah. was no yeah. surprises. Yeah. Like every, every scene we've yeah. seen something on. I Which, remember people on actually, AJB saying that before the film came out, they were burned out. Yeah, yeah. yeah they're, 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 everybody's oh so so into trying to find this and find that, or yeah, yeah, and, and yeah. research it and get every little little morsel they you, can. You, but before the movie's out, they're just done. You know yeah. how I knew it, and you know this is thanks to a lot of our friends out here, and, and obviously Remert and, and his sources. Before I went and saw Spectre in London, mm -hmm. I had 
every outfit and jacket yeah, yeah, and piece yeah. of clothing <laughs> I wanted. <laughs> Even before the movie came out, it was like, this is crazy. It was Skyfall. Like, yeah. the movie comes out and they were like, oh, I wonder what that story yeah, is. Yeah, but yeah, times yeah, yeah. have changed. Yeah, like, totally you know, yeah, yeah. it's amazing. Is this what's going to happen? Like, six months into this movie, are yeah. we going to have all the clothing and then we're going to wait six months like, I wonder yeah. how he wears that sweater. <laughs> I wonder when he wears the bow tie. I remember we went to go see uh, Skyfall at one point. We, we, we met a, a group of us. Right. And you showed up wearing head to toe, the yeah, complete outfit. I'm like, wow. <laughs> I did. Yeah. I did. Uh, yeah, it was just <laughs> bad like that. But, but so in, that, in that case, it was not even avoiding spoilers. It was actually uh, yeah. official spoilers in a way. Uh, so I think it's, yes. it's, uh, it, uh, I also hope that, There's that, all these that levels. it's more teasing. Yeah. Than actually yeah. just giving way because I mean it's just bombardment of like visual, yeah. visual, you know, being uh, being out there. But like, there's a trailer out there. Um, by the way, there's two trailers out there. There's there's one that dropped today that I'm going to talk about in a second. But there's one that I think dropped about a week ago, which I don't think Joe liked because I listened to all of Joe's stuff and I think he's actually said he wasn't crazy about this. Or maybe you were okay with it. Uh -huh. But um, it's the trailer for the Joker with Joaquin Phoenix. Mm -hmm. And when I if you didn't like it or didn't did like it, it's one thing. But what I liked about it is I could not tell you the plot of that movie, which is great. Yeah, yeah. I know I'm interested. I know I'm connected to it. I know there's some intriguing visuals, mm. but at least I'm not sitting there going like, oh, wow, he blows up a church. Right, right, right. right, right. That yeah, starts yeah. the catalyst. Yeah. I mean, give me a tease. Uh, J literally J a tease. J.D. Sutton says here as well, a uh, GoldenEye teaser. It was a GoldenEye teaser. Yes. Was just the first mm. time them the jump. jumpy that's like, stuff like that like that, that, that yeah. is true like that, that those are you know good yeah. like it makes it interesting and it's like a great scene but it doesn't give away anything yeah i totally plus agree. it's in the it's even, even in a pre-title sequence so you yes. don't have to give it away like after two minutes it's done and then you yeah. can still have the whole movie but i like how marvel's been doing it lately where it seems like the the, the trailers you get they, they are they're from the first half an hour like, like the first half an hour of the film, yeah, no, that's, that's where they, that's yeah, where they yeah, pull yeah. a lot of yeah. stuff. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah I, like, I, like, I wish they would kind of stick to doing that, because you're right. When they yeah. give you just the whole movie, it's like, well, then what am I hearing? Yeah, we're yeah. kind of need stuff yeah. to the end to the beginning. Like, we'll yeah, the even just the clips, stuff. when they show it real fast, it's like, you know, you, yeah, like, yeah, it's yeah. like when that part of the movie comes, you're like, okay, well, I saw that clip, so I know what's yeah. coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah. That's what it's probably going to be a highlight, otherwise they wouldn't show it in the trailer. There's a reality behind this. A lot of, no, not a lot, but when they make trailers, especially if you take a Bond movie, they tend to do it very often to demographics. So we need to attract a yeah, younger yeah, audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like us mm -hmm. older guys, we're gonna go see it. The younger audience needs action because they can't relate yeah. to an older James Bond. Yeah, yeah. So let's put tons of action, but then you wind up mm -hmm. seeing every action scene and yeah. they're really not surprised. Mm -hmm. um, and by the way, yes, Bond Armory, yes, Ray. Hey, Ray. Mm -hmm. um, still silence on the press conference. And I wanna yeah. bring this yeah. up because mm -hmm. yeah. I watched a trailer today. I saw, um, and, and I won't talk to too many details because maybe you didn't see it, but the new Star Wars film coming out dropped the title and the trailer. I watched it. I got mm -hmm. excited. I, I think there's a redemption moment going on potentially, mm -hmm. but we won't get political here. But what I loved about it is, is that it gave everybody something that really is starving for information on yeah. Star Wars. Yes. Mm -hmm. What we don't have today is a press conference for fun for starving <laughs> individuals. Yeah. How, how do we all feel about that? I know, I feel like I've been hibernating for like the last five <laughs> years, right? Like right? I'm slowly waking up from, you know, my hibernation of yes. like bombs because yeah. it feels like it's, it's been ages and of course we're, you know, dying to hear stuff and we've been, uh, in a way, mm. disappointed with two delays already, um, yeah. which of course is understandable, like, you know, no fun with that, but yeah. it just adds to the extreme long gap here. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we definitely are looking forward to, uh, to a press conference, but also I have no word, I have no um, idea. It could actually be, I, I think it could even be much later, like in a way they don't have to do it even soon like they could nope. wait till they're in italy or something filming or somewhere else who knows you know you can you can film anywhere they could around the world a you know spoiler. well i don't know i could say mexico or i could say canada you know like yeah. America, yeah. when they start filming, filming in canada <laughs> boise idaho wait till bond comes to you <laughs> how dare you boise yeah. but you're right i mean it's they, I, they could they could do a location thing like in Solden where yeah. they did like the location sort of mm. you know like i would people are saying may now it may not even be may yeah, I mean, uh, no one says it has to be at the start. It doesn't have to be in Pinewood. It right. can be anywhere, you know, and it might be more beautiful somewhere else even, so who knows. How, how are you feeling about the lack of a press conference or information? Um, well, I mean, it, it, it kind of just sort of goes to the, the lack of anything involving a new Bond movie. You know, the whole, the whole process, everything about the process yeah. has been longer and slower. Mm. Um, and it's interesting, too, and I, I'm sort of fascinated by, I think once the second... 
delay, the, the second, um, when they changed the release date the mm -hmm. second time, you really started to see people start to go, all right, what now, what's up? Mm -hmm. and, and there was sort of like a split in different camps, like on how to feel about it. You know, some people are uh, a little upset and, and some people are like, like all right, let, let, let's take it easy. You know, let's give them, let them do what they need to do. Yeah. Um, and, it, and it is, I, again, it, and I, I, I have a really weird feeling about it because I feel, I feel like I have feet in both camps, mm. you know, where I, I can completely understand both sides. And, you know, and again, it's like, it's like when your teenager comes to you and they say, I have a report due on Monday, but right. this happened today and this happened today, so I can't get it done. Well, when did you get this assignment? Oh, back in September. <laughs> It's true. Suddenly you're not so forgiving. I mean, you know, you... It's true. Well, Dean Dunleavy, for example, says, uh, Skyfall Teaser had a perfect teaser trailer, which I agree. I Italian know. Stallion says he's starving also. Mm, but I yeah. think one of the best things was uh, Marky Mark, which Marky Mark, I don't know if everybody knows, we do have celebrities following us. Marky yeah, Mark, course, yeah. love <laughs> your movies. Um, even the happening. What? Um, no. And I love the, uh, the the underwear ads you do. But Marky Mark <laughs> says, uh, Quantum of Solace felt like a trailer. Um, in and of itself, and left me more confused yeah. than the actual trailer. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Marky Mark, Very everybody true. just thinks you know you're a body. You know what? <laughs> you're smart too. Damn it. Uh, no. um, but by the way, uh, John Simmons brings up a good point. I have a contest that's still going mm. on Instagram. Uh, John Simmons says, yeah, I yeah. may need to revisit my guest for the press conference date on David's Instagram. I got a great swag kit. Anybody can win it. But everybody's losing right now because they all said like this April week, 4th, yeah, yeah, April like, 5th. Yeah, yeah, no, and no, nobody no. said May 9th or yeah, anything, no, but no, no. that's interesting. Still running. Um, I also said, read so one of the comments, I forgot who said something about like getting tired of all the speculation of some of the uh, oh, actors. Oh, the, the new Bond, yeah. Um, which oh, is definitely right. one of the questions I could probably get asked most. Isn't that great? Um, anywhere I go, you know. Yeah. Which, yes. Who's that, your favorite Bond and who's going to be the next one? Yeah. Yeah. Like, who is he? Is, is Daniel Craig doing the next one? Yeah, I think so. Who is the next one? And I, I, yeah. I think we're never going to know before the Bombshell yeah. 5, first of mm -hmm. all. Like, I think that would be crazy if they were... Do you have a wish list before. person? Do you have a person that you would like? Me, personally? Yeah. Oh, uh, you, you want to do it? No, no, no. Oh, I thought you said you personally. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, but like, I think I, I agree, like, you know, it's tiring sometimes. So it let's is. focus on yeah. Bond 25, definitely. Yeah. And, um, I don't think they know. They might have people in mind. They might, mm. you know, but they're not gonna, definitely not going to announce it before Bond 25. Yeah. That would be insane. Unless... Maybe somehow the two movies are connected, twenty five and twenty six in some yeah. crazy way. Could I be, actually, I I hope they don't announce somebody before twenty five. I, I mean, think it would take away. From I want twenty five to be a movie. And in fact, I yeah. I oh gosh, I would really, I think I would shake a little bit if they did a passing of a baton, like at the end, like well, I'm, yeah, oh, oh, I mean, I could, take it. Yeah. What do you? I mean, I, I yeah, I could, I completely agree. I wouldn't want. I I I think the passing of the baton would be as much fun as if they did the code word thing, which. I would never want to say, uh, like as Bond James Bond being a code name, uh, wouldn't no, I don't want to say that. And, and plus, <laughs> and again, it's almost like let's let's get this film done before you start telegraphing your moves on your next one. Because I mean, I, I've seen them do that before. Remember, um, remember Miss Penelope Smallbone? Yes. Who we saw once and then never again. Yes. You know, so it's like you know, I, I think like did you just focus on right now? Let's, <laughs> let me, let's not even go there yet. No, By sorry. the way, no. late breaking news, and I have to announce this. This is big. And I, I apologize if this is a spoiler for anybody. I'm trying to be careful. One Jeep cam, hello, one Jeep cam. Hope you and your son are doing great. Just ate some Arby's. <laughs> uh, folks, this is big. I know the Star Wars trailer came out today. I know we're talking about OB doing this whole new line. But he just ate some Arby's. No, uh, we yeah. might as well just stop the whole well, I mean, it is dinner time for, you know. It, it is dinner time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's, he's I mean, down south. It's actually yeah. amazing you're watching this then. Right? Oh, by the way, there's been a, there's, and, and this is not a spoiler, believe me, this is just, I, I see these funny rumors. Let's talk mm. about the rumors. Mm. That are, so the newest one, which they're, they're loving having Photoshop uh, time with this, is that Chris Hemsworth. Oh, Thor. Okay. Yeah. Double O Thor. <laughs> oh, what, what do we think about Chris Hemsworth as a potential Bond? We'll start with no, you, Joe. No, 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 no. No? No. Too, too Thorish? Yeah, great Thor. No, yeah. I don't, don't think he's Bond. How about you? I just said that I don't want to talk about this question. <laughs> oh my God! I love it! <laughs> he's sticking to his guns! I, you know what? Our goal is to get Remmer to walk out. <laughs> just get, get on a plane and head back to Brooklyn. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, by the way, a couple people are asking about uh, certain questions of actors on here. Nothing's been announced with the bad guy, so we don't know mm. um, who it's going to be. Uh, mm. it, it could be anybody. Mm. But. It's interesting the trend that they've had in the Craig films where they 
they they seem all of the Bond. Maybe oh, maybe this is not true anymore. But most of the Bond girls have been relatively unknowns. Yeah, um, it's mm. only the bad guys that they like going for big name people. Mm. True, and I and I kind of I, I find that parallel to be sort of interesting. Mm. You're right. That's Except, true. um, uh, what, what was her name? Dakota Johnson. Uh, she was rumored as as like a new Bond girl. Is that right? Do you know who that even is? No. <laughs> she's well, from, I think I know the name, but I don't know. She's from name. Shades of Grey. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, or, yeah, yeah. or Grey Shades. Yeah. So I have never, never Shady seen one. Shady Grey. <laughs> Shady I, Tree. Yeah. I think I read half of the first chapter of the first book and put it down and said, can't do it. <laughs> you can't do it. Can't do it. Um, by the way, just I'm going to throw a curious question. This is for the audience, not, not us. We'll talk about something else. What does everybody feel about Bond having to be... British, um, or even European in general. I mean, we've had an Australian Bond, obviously, mm. but mm. what what do we what do we feel about it? Has to be like you can't have an American Bond. You can't have, you know. Uh, I mean, you're, you're talking about an actor, right? An Black actor. Brit uh, yeah, like you said, they they've gone Australian, they've gone Irish, they've gone. I mean, we've only had two English. Is that correct? Because even wasn't Roger Moore from Wales. I don't, think, okay. I don't think. I think the only one who was actually English was. I mean, we have Scottish, so I mean, I th the whole big deal with Craig was that like finally we have an actual English oh, yeah. Bond actor. That's true. Mm -hmm. So well, where's Timothy Dalton from? I, well, I maybe mean, he's the one who's from Wales, actually. Yeah. Um, I think him. That's. I think you're right on that. Yeah. What do you think? Well, I guess it's a. It is a, a big part of the character. Yeah. Um, so mm. I would think that the character, at least, the, the actor, would have at least some kind of British. You know, mm. slight accent, or yes. it cannot be too obviously not British. Let's say that way. I guess he doesn't have to be British per mm. se with his passport, but if he doesn't speak slightly British, like if it sounds accent, false, then it's gonna. Yeah, sound I guess false. I guess it's not gonna mm. work. Yeah. But, I actually would not mind in that, in like because because Bond is such a, tr a kind of a British treasure. I, I would not mind a little patriotism in that respect, where where they yeah, said yeah. we want him no, to be not. British, you know. Yeah. I, I agree with that. And by the way, yeah. this is this is great. Mm -hmm. Christopher Hackett says, "Can't keep the British end up with a Yank's backside." <laughs> <laughs> I like it, and I'm a Yank, and I Cheers. like Cheers. I like that. <laughs> by the way, um, this is this is fantastic. Rodrigo Renault says, and I love this because I agree with him. We need a Bond that can face John Wick. And I think what he means, mm -hmm. Rodrigo, let me let me kind of uh, do the translation here, is that you've got John Wick movies now, mm -hmm. and you've got Mission Impossible, yeah, yeah. and the stakes are raised. I, I got so excited with uh, John Wick yeah. 3 coming out. Mm -hmm. I love the first two movies. Um, mm -hmm. My wife loves them. Mm -hmm. It's action-oriented, but yeah. you love the character. Mm -hmm. Bond's got to at least mm. get up to that bar. I yeah. would agree with that. I mean, what do you guys think? Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah, the, the, yeah the I, they yeah. really do. I mean, I, I said the same thing after. In fact, I, I was, my theory when when uh, Danny Boyle parted ways was that um, Fallout came out and everyone just took a look at that and said, okay, we, we can't do an art house bond where we've got people <laughs> running to see this like a, a yeah, incredible yeah. blockbuster film. Mm. Um, my hunch was that they really felt the need to amp up the action. And you're right. Films like, you know, John Wick is a great example, and if you, if you saw Atomic Blonde, I mean that was a great one too. But I felt that the 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 action in those. Why don't we play that one? Because um, I was doing a joke earlier with Remmer, and I said, um, "Oh, we can't talk about things like this. We'll just talk about Atomic uh, Blonde. <laughs> like we can't talk about James Bond because it's spoilers." So, yeah. yeah. Um, what I love about those movies is that the action is is over the top, but still yeah. kind of has one foot on the ground. Oh, so that's that a good way to put it, it. it almost kind of like in yeah. the Bourneish kind of like it's it's almost like part born. But just a little, little more out there than that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but they had one foot planted on the ground, so you really, you, you could sort of let your disbelief go a little bit. So I think that that level of action was really good. So I'd All like right. to see more of that. So you, you, we, we have someone who's 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 testing this, which is okay. good. Kyle B. 007 says we shouldn't feel threatened by Mission Impossible or John Wick. Star Wars and Star Trek coexist as wonderful franchises. Mm. There's room for more than one action spy franchise. We agree. We're very protective, like you are, of Bond. We mm -hmm. just want them to be as good, if not better. Mm -hmm. So all we're saying is we love that John Wick and Mission Impossible are like a boulder running behind Bond, mm -hmm. saying, yes, you've got to be better. Right. Not, no. oh, yes. we're going to choose one or the other. Right. No. Keep up with the competition, right? Don't let them get the better of you. Good no. question here. Is John no. Hamm too old and American to play Bond? Oh, that's a great choice. I, I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, I, what do you think? 
I think he's too old, but I think he actually really likes the part, actually. He, mm. he, but I think it's they're not going to go for I think like seven or eight years old, ago, think, yeah. he would have been a good one. He, he, he would mm. be a good one, actually. It's a yeah. good yeah. I like it. Oh, I, w- I, I would agree with that. I think he's probably got a little, just a tiny little bit too old. In fact, I kind of would have gone for uh, Clive Owen years ago. Yeah, also, yeah. No, you know, but I think now is also kind of that window. Yeah, definitely. A couple people like John Hamm. Uh, I don't think Mission Impossible will outlast Cruz. It's an interesting... Mm. That's, that's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would is, probably is it Tom Cruise first and Mission Impossible? Like which comes first? I I think it's sort of become a Tom Cruise vehicle where I think yeah. he is now the. Yeah. I mean I mean he is he is a crazy person. Yeah, and thank I, God. I think he is the driving force behind those films yeah. at this point. Yeah, he, he actually looks like he looks he looks really good in the last movie. I mm, think. I was yeah. impressed like how how he can keep it up. Like oh it's my like God, right? I'm like I, this is still good. Like this is still doing yes. like this is great. Like you want, you want to hear a little trivia? Yes. Tom Cruise when he filmed Fallout. Yeah. Was this was one year older than Wilfred Brimley was when he filmed Cocoon? You're joking. What? Truth. True story. Diabetes. Wilfred Brimley. Diabetes. Yeah. Oatmeal. He, yes. Wilfred <laughs> Brimley. Jeez. He, he was he was one year older than Wilfred Brimley. I Guys, was, eat all your vegetables. That's, that's right. the only thing here. Bottom hey, twenty five fitness challenge. One cheat cam. Oh, about, I love this. Uh, I like this is a question for you. Got to take. Too. This is a good one. I like I like, yeah. the, I like that you bring it up. Um, electric Aston Martin. A done deal or a rumor? And what um, do you feel about it if it is? Uh, yeah, I mean, but uh, first of all, if it's a rumor or a done deal, I still think it's a rumor. Uh, oh, I, I, don't, I don't. I don't think it's, it's a a set in stone that it's, for example, James Bond driving an electric Aston Martin. The fact that there will be an electric car in the movie, maybe even an Aston Martin, could be true. Sure. Could even be seen in a queue, um, whatever, uh, you know, could be in the background of queue. Like the fact that they yeah. order one of those cars to be on set doesn't mean he's going to drive it. Mm. And they're going to be replacing anything, so I think it's still rumor in the sense of like I agree. how appear, how does the car appear in the I, movie? I'm um, and I can I can I tell yeah, you something? Yeah. I I was very strongly feeling against this idea, and this is, mm-hmm. I gosh, I'm, I guess I'm traditional, but I love the sound of the mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when that Aston yeah. Martin turns on, yeah. mm-hmm. like in Casino Royale when he's going towards the car. I got emotional, like, mm-hmm. it, yeah. but. If an electric car is used for a reason, in other words, Bond has yeah. to be stealth and he can make no noise. Yeah, yeah. Okay, then I'll take it. Mm. I and mean, what do you guys? What do you think? Yeah, I, I kind of. Um, it's one of those things where I just, I'm just going to sort of have faith and hope that they know how to handle it. Because I, I had the same feeling. I'm like, you're gonna have a Bond car without that. That, I mean, that sounds like a kitten purring, like a, like a that little rumble. Uh, yeah, I would hate to lose that. Yeah, yeah right. But now, now it's gonna. Um, so we'll, but I just, Can I you imagine that. Bond backing up and it goes beep, beep, <laughs> beep. <laughs> yeah. Well, but I think, I, it, I think it opens up a lot of uh, possibilities for jokes between Q and uh, Bond, which they've been doing in the last few movies, where somehow, you know, he gets the electric Aston and, you know, of course, maybe he just r- drives it into the ravine or something, whatever, and just, you know, picks up the dog. Like, it opens up a lot of possibilities, I think, like for another that shite. Yeah, yeah. Like, mm. you know, like some kind of, you know, um, They'll probably, they, they, they'll probably do something smart with it. I, I they, they will. Yeah. yeah, the car thing, they I think they do right. But mm. Joe, this one's for you. Um, I like what you said in the past video. The next Bond needs to be about story and characters. Oh, yeah, yeah. You've yeah. always said that. A big time. Absolutely. I, I, I think the... And, and again, it, I, think, I feel like it's more true now than it's ever been before. Because, like, you know, in the old days, you went... You know, a movie came out, you went to see it, loved it, and then you never saw it again. Yeah, you know, and it wasn't even it wasn't even until years later that they would show up on TV. But now, literally, like they're going to be out on Blu-ray in, in a matter of weeks, sometimes, mm-hmm. and we will watch them ad nauseum. <laughs> and we are all armchair quarterbacks, where we will just dissect yeah, everything well. about films. So the story really needs to be tight. Um, you know, you can't have a lot of loose threads and you know things that don't work. Um, but yeah, I, I I find that the one this the films that stay with me always have. The great characters, the great stories, the great, you know, mm-hmm. the, the the hero journey, you know, at mm-hmm. least to an extent. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I totally agree that he's that. All right. I'm going to give Joe the, the little cheat oh, thing here. Don't touch the screen because it's an active screen. I think I know why. You, you know why what? I think I'm first. Okay. That's exactly why. I'm actually <laughs> getting more vodka. So you, you guys hang out with these two. Answer more questions. There you go. It's going so well. And I'm going to get some more vodka. All right. Uh, oh, here, okay, here's one. Mm-hmm. What do you guys think of the Bond dying rumors? Opposed or for it? Yeah, I saw that one, yeah. Yeah, uh, that's um, an interesting one. I mean, I think it would be... 
you know, it opens up again like a lot of possibilities of like, mm. uh, uh, you know, you only live twice kind of dying possibilities of like, you know, fake or like, uh, you know, right, right, like right. fake dying, sort of yeah. like a skyfall open kind of dying, yeah. you know, like uh, I think there's not going to be a real, you know, mm. killing off the character and starting off in like a 60s yeah. themed, you know, thing, uh, uh, but yeah. I, I think it's interesting. I, I, I can't imagine them doing it, but I think people probably, uh, maybe after Skyfall, when you actually saw Judy Dench actually die in the film, you thought... Yeah, it's possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there does seem to be an interesting... It's funny, here's... I remember when Fukunaga had come out and said that he wanted to carry on the arc that was started in Casino Royale. And when I first heard it, oh, yeah. Yeah. I was so against it. I thought mm. that's a terrible idea. Mm. And I thought that, you know, I, I kind of felt like all of this, you know, th this kind of bond, the, the achiness of bond has just gone on too much. But I, I kind of sort of started to rethink that because now I, I am starting to sort of warm up to the idea of well I, I, I guess to to do just a standoff at this stage of the game Sky, I mean you could argue that Skyfall was sort of a more of a standalone mission I think yeah yeah more than that yeah. not so much yeah, yeah I but um, I, I do think to, to sort of bail because on the, the things they've done so mm -hmm. far you did exactly what I said no, 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 no. Yeah. that's okay don't touch it you didn't know how to do that. Smart. <laughs> That's very good. Um, so yeah, so I am kind of a little more on board with the whole idea of it. But, uh... <laughs> Don't mind that. That's actually not a bodily function noise. It's a haunted house. Okay, creation. we're back with vodka. Okay, one more from J.D. Sutton. We yeah. Need more, we need more humor in Bond. I think... Appropriately I agree, so. I, I agree in, this, in the sense that it, it, we could... Like, also I saw... Post about uh, Henry Cavill, you know, still being, you know, can't pass, can't look past Henry Cavill. Yeah. I think that sort of lightness that uh, Henry Cavill could bring of like a sort of, you know, almost uh, caricature style Bond, yeah. Roger Moore style. I, I wouldn't be opposed to that um, if it's done well, you know, to bring it a little bit more into the light atmosphere with, of course, the good action and the good stories, but a little bit more of the lightness that we're kind of been losing um, the last few movies. Uh, so, yeah, I agree, more humor, but in a, yeah. I agree. I agree. I'm not sure if Daniel Craig is going to bring it in the last movie. Um, I think there's there's a difference after, between yeah. wit and overarching mm. humor. Mm. Oh yeah, we can. Yeah. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. 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 Gents. cheers, uh, cheers. You know, it, it is cocktail hour. Are we still all Thanks. having cocktail hour together. It's no. it's going to be cocktail evening, by the way, not cocktail mm -hmm. hour. And thanks again for joining. Yeah, absolutely. Dean Dunleavy says no slapstick humor. I agree with that. Oh, no, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. But more in like a lighter tone of... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Matt Paulson says humor like in Casino Royale. Yeah, Casino yes. Royale, exactly. Yeah. Casino Royale is the mm -hmm. perfect example of like... Actually, they're yes. doing it also perfectly. Mm -hmm. Like that lightness, you know, sometimes these little jokes, the perfect chemistry between mm -hmm. him and... Uh, you know and my girl, yeah. Casino Royale humor, I think, worked for me is that there were so many dark moments that when you had a little bit of lightness, not slapstick, not mm -hmm. even yeah, humor, no, no, no. You, you found it funny because you needed the break. Yeah. yeah. yeah and so yeah, like yeah, when yeah, he yeah. signed yeah. in to their hotel and he's like, go ahead, honey, you're yeah, from the yeah, treasure. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. laughed, yeah, yeah, but yeah. it wasn't particularly like, you know, 009's dan, 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 <laughs> dan, dan, from Spectre. Yeah, it wasn't right, like exactly. slap you in the face. Right. Right. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I, I completely agree with that. I kind of feel like that kind of humor is, is really more about just good storytelling and good, you know, yeah. again, wittiness between the characters, and yeah. I'm all yeah. for that. Yeah. By the way, uh, T.M. Martin says, Roger Moore tested the limits of 007. Amen he to that. did. But yeah. I have to tell you, because Roger Moore, I grew up with him, mm. I watch them now, and I watch them in a very different way than I do Craig's movies. I don't. Mm. I watch Craig like, this is a badass, doing badass things. I watch more because I'm like, I just need to have fun. Yeah. Mm, it's, yeah. it's just yeah. campy, kind of yeah. Yeah. interesting fun. Yeah. Mm. yeah. 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 I agree with that. <laughs> do you think uh, Hinks will return in Bond 25? Mm. I tell you what, yeah. I would like that if that happened. I would not mind that one bit, really. I do too. I mm -hmm. I follow Dave Bautista on. Um, he he's a fan. I mm -hmm. mean, it's so funny because he's yeah. like a, this monstrous guy and stuff. Mm -hmm. But he's a fanboy, so I think he would love it. I think he would put a, yeah. a lot into it. Yeah. And I don't think it was. Uh, I think he had kind of a goofy end. I think he, did, he deserves more as well. Yes. He deserves more from his character. The, the, he had way more in him than he gave in, or he could give, or was allowed to in uh, Inspector. I think. I agree. Yeah. And by the way, I know we're getting into like movie talk, but one of the things I'd love to get everybody's opinion on. That scene with Blofeld and when they introduce Hinks at that table was so ominous and suspenseful and you're like whispering and all mm -hmm. these things happening. And then later in the film, Hinks just goes and 
in an inauspicious way. Mm -hmm. And Blofeld kind of gets relegated to, I don't know, just like a little <laughs> playfulness at the end. It's like, it's almost like there was two different people filming. He right, yeah, 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 yeah. It's like you had scary mm -hmm. and then you had, you know, sticky. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. And, and it, did, it did seem like once that boardroom scene was done, Hanks goes off in, on his mission and Blofeld goes off on another mission. And the two are not, not they're kind of cross purposes at this point. Now is this, yeah. I see James Rowling Bond Complex. Um, make it everything or nothing. I, James, is that you from the Bond Complex? If it is, love your podcast. I think it is. I don't know. But you'll answer oh, yeah, me soon. Yeah. I think, uh, well, somebody had asked about the Bond video game, but I think he's responding to that one. Somebody had said, what do you want to see in a Bond video game? I would oh. just like to see one. I, yeah. you know, that was, you know, I think that also adds to sort of the frustration too. Thank God we had at least a book or two, I think, since since um, mm. since Spectre. Yes. Because I feel like those gaps between the Bond films, we would have at least one book, and usually a Bond video game would come out. And honestly, it's probably the only time I ever play a video game is when a new Bond game comes out. I'll be like, oh, let me get this and I'll play it. Yeah. Um. So, but they they've lost a lot of money, I think, on some of the. James Bond video games. Is that right? I, I think they have. I think mm -hmm. um, uh, GoldenEye and 007 Legends. Um, if you, and, and many of you may actually follow him, but Calvin, uh, who is another 007 reviewer, he does a lot of movies, he does mm -hmm. books. The best thing I think he does, and I really enjoy it, he's very funny actually, is he talks about video games. Mm -hmm. And he's really good at it because yeah. he plays them well and he's got the right amount of youth, etc. Um, so, he actually has made mention, he knows a lot about the history that a lot of these have not done well. Mm. And he really rips into um, a lot of them, which is just fascinating to me. But yeah. I, I mean, I'd love a good video game. Yeah. You're cradling that. <laughs> <laughs> I had to plug it in. Um, from Russia with Love Game Was Good. I agree. I liked it. I did too. The, the only thing disconcerting mm. about yeah. uh, From Russia uh, with Love, the video game for me was... It was Sean Connery who was back, so it was his voice. But honestly, it was like the old Sean Connery. <laughs> so it was like, hello, Miss Money Penny. Like, you know, everything is his lower GI had, had dropped. But obviously. I've never heard of a touchy on Romanova. Yeah, that's it, that's it. Did you remember that? <laughs> yeah, totally. It's like, <laughs> but I've never heard of a touchy. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody lift me up. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to shoot you I now. <laughs> I remember getting really excited when that came out, though, thinking they should get Roger Moore to do like a Moonraker video game. Like, how much fun oh. would that be? Wait a minute. Yeah. There was a discussion, I think it was uh, James Bond and Friends, where somebody... Uh, somebody, um, the gentleman from MI6, uh, made me mention that there was going to be a Roger Moore game and they wound up flipping it and that's where From Russia With Love came. Because uh, they didn't think they could get Sean Connery. They were going to oh, do like, where it goes uh, through all the Roger Moore films. That would have been uh, amazing. Yeah. Somebody says uh, Bloodstone was amazing. I liked Bloodstone. Did you ever play that? I didn't play that. It was a Daniel Craig game. I mm -hmm. mean, it was basically, uh, you know, if Daniel Craig had his own game yeah. type thing, which I, I enjoyed that one. I don't think I, ever, I, I don't think I ever actually finished it though. I think I got kind of frustrated with it halfway through and stopped. Yeah, the the Quantum of Solace game I loved, and I remember one of the reasons why I loved that one is I remember like yes. the settings were so great. Like the um, uh, the embassy setting was great because you sort of had a, yes. had a very the geography was very similar to the movies. Yep, I had a lot of fun with that game. John Curry says they turned the video game franchise into Call of Duty. You're right. I even think that they used. Mm. Was it um, was it Goldeneye? Or, sorry, yeah, the the release, the, the re-release, the new one. Mm -hmm. I think they used the Call of Duty engine or something like that. Oh, okay. yeah, um, that rings a bell. That mm. that that happens. Mm. Um, all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw something out here because a lot of people that connect with what you do, mm. you know, being James Bond, you know, learn how to play poker, horseback ride, ski, be James Bond, mm. bungee jump, um, and obviously James Bond lifestyle, the brands, the the environment, the culture, all these things that we do. When you wear something James Bondish, when you um, have a particular piece of clothing or, or what have you on you, do you feel like you're dressing up as James Bond or do you feel like you have a small representation that means something James Bondish to you? Like what goes through your head? Here, we'll start with you. Good question. Um, I. I feel it's not dressing up. I feel it, it, it. Well, also because we've been wearing it so long, I guess it becomes part it's of you. It's a part of you. It becomes yeah. part of you. But 
but um, it, it, it's a nice reminder a lot of times where you just, you know, you walk around the street with your barber and you're like, oh, yeah, hey, I'm wearing this barber. It's, you know, it's actually very bondage. So you, yeah. feel, you feel these moments coming up, you know? So it, it enables you a little bit, I think, you know, wearing these things. Mm. Um, a, lot time, cause a lot of times you don't put it on consciously, that's what I mean. Because it's, right. just, it's just my winter jacket, it's that barber for or the last five years or six yeah. years or whatever. Um, and you just put it on, you know. So it's, it's really less like, and, and then you have these moments where it reminds you. So I, I, like, I like that part of it. It's, 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 a, it's a secret identity, you know, nobody knows. Mm, love that. Um, and, and sometimes you do even see other people wearing something like that. And you, 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 can actually, you can be like, <laughs> or you can even, yeah, exactly, yeah, you can, you know. It's a secret code, and yeah. uh, it's 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 a really uh, you know selfish thing to do in a way, but uh, it's, it's, I agree. it's great. Yeah. yeah, same. What about you, Joe? Um, I'm gonna totally ruin everything you just said. And ah. I feel like remember when you used to put on the Batman underoos under your clothes oh, yeah. and no one else knew it. <laughs> <laughs> like I I I, I get hysterical. I mean I get a big kick out of wearing the bond clothes because honestly, and, and I mean because I usually I mean again you save them for like occasions usually because I kind of feel like even even the casual bond clothes is usually a little step up. From like you know what what a casual person might be wearing it yeah. on a given day, um, I kind of sort of feel like I'm dressing up like James Bond, and I don't mind it. You know, again, it's weird because I, again, it's not like you're dressing up like Captain America. No, yeah, if you right. dress up in the Bond clothes, I mean, you could kind of be cosplaying in your own mind all day long. I, I, no one knows it, but yeah. I do have it though. If you sometimes you you, you wear a tuxedo for some event, you know, yeah. then I feel like I'm dressing up. Oh, right, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. That's like being Batman. I could I could work with a Batman or with that. It feels the same. You know, yeah. like, you guys okay, hit on yeah. something though yeah. because I think I truly feel there's a difference between wearing a full outfit. Like when I wore that Skyfall outfit to yes. the movie theater, yeah. I'm like, all right, I'm dressing like James Bond in, in the Skyfall, mm. head to toe. Yeah. Mm. So, but when I wear a pair of Crocker and Joan boots or if I wear a particular Tom Ford sweater or mm -hmm. something like that, I feel like there's an aspect there. Then yeah. I feel like it's that little hidden yeah. secret yeah. Yeah. of yeah. like, ooh, that's right. I yeah. got this on. Yeah. And, it, and it connects me to the excitement, but it's yeah, not full on like, I'm James Bond, yeah. but a tuxedo transforms you. Sure. Yeah, it's okay. It's just really I mean, you just like, yeah, yeah, the yeah. music it's swings. Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. Yeah. But he, even, even when you wore the full blown Skyfall outfit, again, no one knows except us. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's, it really is kind of like a secret handshake. To anyone yeah. else, you're yeah. just wearing you're just totally. regular clothes. Yeah. Th yeah. This is perfect. Uh, again, Marky Mark, and again, love your movies. Um, <laughs> what? It's your, no. Well, no, no, the, the last Transformers was amazing. Um, my Crockett and Jones shoes make me stand taller. Better posture, mm -hmm. and that adds to my confidence and makes me feel a bit bondish. I'm just deluding myself, I'm sure. No, that's true. I think the, the confidence thing yeah. is not, is not, a, is not a, a fake a real thing. thing. It's a real yeah. thing. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. It, it can definitely add to your confidence, sure. which is... You're right, it shows in everything. It shows yeah. not just with the shoes. Right. I mean, people might not care, but like the fact that you stand up better or act you know, more confident. It's a big true. thing. Yeah. And people forget that every generation have had style icons. You've had Brando, you've mm -hmm. had Steve McQueen. You know, we have, we've had Bond all throughout the ages. And, and it's an interesting question. So one of the things that a, people, a couple people are asking on here is, which Bond do you connect to the most from a style standpoint? For example, our friend Matt Spazer mm -hmm. from the Suits mm -hmm. of James Bond definitely connects with Roger Moore and Sean Connery mm -hmm. more because mm -hmm. he's he's got the suiting yeah, and yeah, the yeah. haberdashery. But yeah, which, yeah. which Bond do you feel like you get the most things from and the connection to? I, I think it's um, it, it's almost sort of a, not a very good answer, but I mean, I sort of have to say Daniel Craig because mm. I feel like the stuff that he wears is so much more contemporary. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he did, you know, I one of the things about Craig that I thought was sort of fascinating is that he kind of blended you know, what we would consider formal with very casual clothing. We saw more casual jeans. stuff from, mm. yeah. Yeah, jeans on. I mean, I mean, when you saw him, I mean, I remember when I first saw Casino Royale, when he gets off the plane in the Bahamas and he takes the jacket off and he's got a short sleeve shirt. Oh. And I remember like, back then I kind of went, I, like, I, my, <laughs> like, I can't believe, like, Mind I mean, blown. I, I see a short sleeve shirt, a dress shirt, and I think Dilbert. I don't think James Bond. But but it did sort of but again it was so retro to what something that Ian Fleming would wear. Yeah. So yeah. I thought like I mean it really kind of you know made me rethink how I saw clothing. Mm -hmm. So I remember so I, I, yeah I would I would say I definitely identify with Craig mostly. Brosnan was the one when it came to suits. Mm -hmm. yeah. Boom! Like he yeah. was the guy you had to watch him for the suits. Yeah, because he, he was just born to wear suits. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he looks way better than anyone else in the suit. Yeah. 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 What, what about, about you? Who do you? Uh... Um, well. I, I guess also Craig because it's it's what's available now. It's what yeah. it's what you know. Uh, they also had 
in a way a really good diverse or they have a really good diverse offering of products you can really pick you know from yeah. like jackets to like, uh, you know, casual to that's know, true suits um but what pe some people say here as well um sean connery is like whatever he was wearing a lot of times very timeless you know yes yes he was a like, template it, it's it's very yeah. Yeah. like even especially thunderball is a great example of course yeah. like maybe minor details of slightly short yes but most stuff is extremely timeless and looks very very cool yeah um which I guess it's still an influence of how I see an ideal bomb. This is, is what, what, what Sean Connery does. Mm. I, I'm going to add one extra thing to the mix because there was something that happened when, remember the first day that he was staying at my house, we went and saw my Bond collection and I got a ton of lifestyle stuff. And I, I do obviously connect with the Craig stuff because it's, it's now and it's contemporary mm. and mm. you can wear it across a lot of things. It kind of is the invisible Bond hobby. Mm. Um, but we were walking around the Pierce Brosnan area downstairs, and there were so many great, elegant things, the cufflinks, the yeah. sunglasses, yeah. that I just looked fondly back, and I'm like, you know what? Yeah. When Brosnan was Bond, I connected with Brosnan. Yeah, like, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, sure, sure. It, yeah, it yeah, just, it had yeah, that, yeah. like, you know, yeah. affinity, mm -hmm. making me think, like, yeah. you know, whoever it is, Henry Cavill, he doesn't want to talk about it. Um, <laughs> Anybody takes over, are we going to automatically connect with that new bond? Well, that's a very interesting question, yeah, because um, I think it also, in, in one way, the way you know you connect maybe to a bond is also how he represents you in a way, you know, is he your type? Uh, is he, yeah. Are you his type, you know, or like are you a similar type, body yes. type? Or, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, so that would really depend on the person, even though you know, I don't see myself as a Craig, you know. Look alike, look alike. Right, right, right. But I still do like actually the the, the clothing choices that they made for him, um, or maybe he, you know, was part of as well. Uh, you know, but I, I would I would then relate more maybe to Pierce Brosnan, you know. But then I That's guess true. you know, and I think for the new person it would depend on how he looks and how you can connect with that. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it's still like you said, you know, whatever Bond wears will always connect with it. I think because yeah, there always be the, some the, aspect. The costume to it. designers make these you know very contemporary <laughs> choices of like stuff that's. Uh, you know, very, you know, either becoming popular, you know, or mm. very... And a lot of people are Brosnan fans, and one of the aspects that a couple people are bringing up is the fact that, for example, Quinn says, I just want to straighten my tie like Brosnan. Yeah, 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 and, yeah. And you're right, Brosnan had a way, we, we've always yeah. talked about this, sure. his well, movements were so elegant, yeah, totally yeah. straightening yeah, yeah, out a yeah, tie. Yeah. I mean, well, I yeah. love when in Skyfall, Craig mm. does the little, like, you know, yeah. shooting the cuffs. Yeah, but there's something about Brosnan. Slightly less, movements. less natural. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. Uh, Brosnan, Brosnan wears it the best. I would say mm, like, he, does. he wears a lot of stuff the best. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's like Connery. If you look at it, like uh, the variation with Connery wore is also quite big. Like he wears everything from like a onesie, uh, uh, very sh very short. You know, uh, shorts to suits and tuxedos. Yeah, mm -hmm. and for example, Brosnan might, and especially Roger Moore as well, might not have been able to. You know, pull off all those uh, casual looks. That's good. You know, yeah. so it, it also I, depends a little bit point. per uh, per per. You know, well, style. based on my size and I think my haircut, I'm more have an affinity to what Craig looks like. You definitely look like kind of the Brosnan aspect for sure. Um, we'll have to see who it is. Maybe it, maybe it's going to be. Um, yeah, we have no idea who it's going to be. We're not, I'm not going to talk about that because <laughs> it's <laughs> really upset. It's really <laughs> upset. <laughs> Um, Alan Hilburn has a really good point. You know Alan really well, right? I sure do. Guys vacation together. Yeah, absolutely. He's a nice guy. Again, Super Alan. nice guy. Yep. The thing about Bond is that clothing is not a costume. It is clothes that can be worn every day for any number of activities. I like mm. the idea of yes. in the style of. Take the basics and make it your own. Mm -hmm. Shit, that should be a t-shirt. Right? <laughs> Alan, I hope you're a Alan. writer, Alan, at heart, because that <laughs> is, that is, I, I'm stealing that. Alan, mm -hmm. you didn't say that. I sent that to you. I'm stealing. <laughs> That's a really good point because mm -hmm. uh, to me, even when I have a piece of clothing, um, mm -hmm. it's not an emulation of James Bond anymore. It's mm -hmm. it's in the style of. So yeah. I've gotten so yeah, many. Yeah. My closet's yeah, yeah. filled with things yeah, that yeah, are yeah, Bond-esque. Yeah, yeah. yeah now you're right. Yeah, or Craig-esque. Yeah. But to get it like dead on the nose, I'm like, oh, yeah. well, that's right, right. that's a James Bond thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. no, that's true. Well, even in, in your Polo video that you, that you did, it was, I mean, oh, you, yeah. you, you so hit the nail on the head is that you have to... You, you have to get stuff that works for you. Your body type is, is a certain way. Your, mm -hmm. Everything about you, is, you, you have to find what works for you anyway. Mm -hmm. So, and it and actually almost sort of goes back to what we were talking about with Bar Brown. When they were talking about, it wasn't so much just to replicate old clothing. Right. Mm -hmm. It was to take that and put it through the modern filter. Yeah. So That's like, I think all of the things we were talking about in the clothing, like you have to sort of make it work with you anyway. So, so you, you watch my videos? 
Is that Seymour? Oh, fuck. I mean, oh, that's amazing. <laughs> uh, Alan Hilburn says it's all mine. All right, so everybody got that? Uh, I, legal information that uh, Alan Hilburn says I can Alan, the next time we travel together, I, I, expect that, I expect that on a T-shirt. That's good. You owe him a drink, too. <laughs> Um, we've got great ones. So uh, Paul has Pursles. I have the Casino Royale Collector Limited Edition. It brings it's a good up, one. It's it, good one to have. Uh, we love that one. Yeah, right? yeah. Talking about. All right. So here we go. This is a little game, and we want everybody here to play. This is horrible to say. Your house is burning. Your home. Your apartment. <laughs> your kids and your dog and your wife. They're all safe and sound outside of the house. You're allowed to go back and get two bond items that have to do with the Bond lifestyle, okay? What do you run back into the house to get? Only two items can you rescue from the fiery furnace. Joe, what two Bond items are you rescuing? Um, the lifestyle I, items, yeah. Everybody play. Yeah, play along. I would probably have to go with my uh, quantum Talamone sweater. Yes, mm. and gorgeous. And then the uh, the Slodinger jumper. Oh yeah, finger. absolutely. Probably those those two. Both classic choices. What about you, you? Two. I would guess one pair of Dupont cufflinks. Oh, um, very nice. I guess the Casino Royale ones. The mm. oh, that's uh, a good one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and maybe my barber jacket because I've been wearing it so long and I, it's one of my favorite clothing items it's pretty worn so i should probably get a new one but i, I would still <laughs> let it back because it's you know it's the one i've been wearing well you've broken it in it's part and of it's who the, you it's are the, it's the original tokito you know uh, one and i yeah I, it's I just not a commander one, so um there would be uh probably the two things i would get i lifestyle wise I love those choices mm. and you uh, i the armani jacket and probably my specter watch from specter just because oh, it was yeah. a gift from danielle so it's Very got nice. a lot of sentimental value Very nice uh, here we go. We've got some people playing. Yeah, tell them. Uh, M. Moore, um, my Omega, if not wearing it, and uh, the Bond Experience sweater. <laughs> nice. I did not pay you to say that. <laughs> Thank you, winky emoji. Uh, this was a good one. Go ahead. Can. Jo Joe Darlington's book and the Bond Experience stress ball. <laughs> By the way, the stress ball you need after you read his book. I don't know if you knew that. Uh, Paul says his Rolex Explorer and Persol 2720. Great yeah, nice choices. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. J.D. Sutton. The Sideshow Roger Moon, Roger Moore, Moore Rune Raker and 007 Blu-ray box set. Mm, not I life, like that. Not lifestyle items. Though, not yeah. lifestyle, but I love those. James Bond Complex. By the way, love your podcast. Do you guys listen oh, to yeah. James Bond? Absolutely. Great uh, stuff. Complex. Excellent. Golden, uh, Golden Eye Pen yeah. and my Skyfall Jack the Bulldog Porcelain. Because <laughs> you don't want it to blow up again. <laughs> yeah. The Golden Eye Pens, you can just go buy 12 of those when you leave. <laughs> Rodrigo says Omega and Tom Ford Henry. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Bond Armory, Ray Ray, says Walter PPK and Billy Reed Pico. Oh, nice. that's nice. You better say that Pico. Yeah, yeah that's, <laughs> that's a good one. Uh, Kyle B says, um, one Omega is on me at all times, so I would yeah. cheat and save two. <laughs> Smart yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. You yeah. can cheat. Max Ruse says, both Daniel Craig, uh, Brunello Cuccinelli okay. caps as their mortgage payments. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> so true. And a Walter PPK. You're going to look good in that cap holding a gun, man. <laughs> Yeah. Alan Hilburn says, uh, the From Russia With Love flare pistols. Mm. You have an actual one. Mm. And my Omega. Yeah, good choice, Alan. Huh? Lloyd Nance, my Blu-rays, and the Italian Thunder... Oh, he's got an Italian Thunderball poster. Yeah, ah, don't okay. let yeah. that burn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. it's also very flammable. Yeah. John Simmons, mm -hmm. Fred Perry Polo, and Jansen Swim Shorts. Mm, cool, you have those. Marky Mark is going to bring his Oscars. No. Um, <laughs> my PPK water pistol and my Never Say Never Again DVD. Use your water pistol to put out the fire. Come on, Marky Mark. You're acting like a muscle head. Habib Remen says Crockett and Jones shoes and my polo shirt. Nice. Yeah. Carol Collins, my 22RB crawler crane. Wait, you have a full size <laughs> crane from For Your Eyes Only? Is it, am I reading that right? Yeah. yeah. So. And my Seamaster. Yeah. Okay. Are you driving it out of there? Is that a crawler crane? It's it? probably a good thing to do. Yeah. Uh, Russ says my Bond Blu-ray box set, multiple signed pictures from the amazing Evergreen. Mm. Yeah, that's, mm, that's not bad. <laughs> uh, Hanafi Din says my Bond car collection and my Amiga watch. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of great answers. William Easton, Anthony Sinclair cocktail cuff shirt. And Tom Ford and Snowden yeah, sunglasses. Yeah, also good. Nice. Yeah, yeah. John Riggs, my 007 watch in the Bond archives. Nice. Yeah, the archives is, is a good I, one. Yeah. I like oh, that yeah, people are good. saving like yeah. books and things. It's yeah, like, yeah. 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 Max Ruse, my Omega and 
was on my wrist running out, so that's safe. Yeah, I love yeah. how Max is painting a story. I'm safe with my Omega. Yeah, yeah. Suddenly, the flames are lapping at me. <laughs> that can go towards next month's mortgage payment. <laughs> Max, you've got everything. I don't know about all these cheats, though. I feel like, remember the episode of Friends when Joey puts on all of Chandler's clothes? Yes! I'd, like I'd run out with all of my Bond clothes at once and then have, yeah. and have like a Blu-ray over my head or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so EO is already cheating. He says, my Y3 jacket, nice that you have one, mm. uh, custom-made uh, Diamonds Are Forever tweet, herringbone sport coat, Crocker and Jones temper. Okay. We'll, we'll allow that. We'll allow that. That's a good choice. TM Martin, my Algerian love knot by Sophie Harley. TM Martin, nice. you have a love knot. Yeah. That is so cool. And your nice. Heckler and Koch um, MP9 with a silencer. Hold on a second. Stop the phone. So TM, you're going on your 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 Sophie Harley thing, very feminine, and you're holding your. Uh, That's the perfect yin and yang. Yeah, yeah it's it's the love and the hate. The same. By the way, Ray from the Bond Armory is is in love. Uh, he's just <laughs> you're just so perfect. Um, that's that's fantastic. Quinn, uh, Blu-ray set and posters, perfect, perfect, perfect. Yeah. Okay, now good choices. We're gonna do something. We're gonna change it up. I hope everybody's having a, a sip. I'm gonna take another sip. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Mm. This is rare. What's happening today? It's not just rare that you're joining us on a Friday. We're so happy about that. Mm. But it's rare to have uh, both Joe and Remmer here with me. So what we'd like to do at this point is we want to open it up to questions. We'll avoid who do you want as the next Bond. Yes. FYI. <laughs> but you may have questions for being James Bond or the Bond lifestyle that, you know, maybe you never had a chance to ask them questions. This is your opportunity to really start asking the questions. So start shooting us questions. Um, let's keep it about the their sites and about their social media presence. We'll keep away from the personal stuff because who cares? Mm -hmm. um, but love to ask some questions about for these guys because they're sitting here right now. I'll throw one out. Um, oh. I can think of one. Yeah. How about Bond locations? How about a favorite Bond location? That's a good one. That's like one of my favorite times. All right, so that's like, good. What is your... Mine? What, wait, hold on. Give us one you've been to and mm -hmm. where you one you want to go to. Ooh, good one. Yeah. Uh, kind of a... Well, one of my favorites would definitely be the Bahamas. Because I feel like it's... Yeah. Talk about a nice... Iconic. I mean, it's, it's iconic. It's just a great place to vacation. And it's there's a lot of really great... Bond sites there. It's not just one or two. I mean, there's a, there's a whole ton. Um, which one would be... Oh, my, oh, I know. That's an easy one. Um, Prague. Carl Levy Barry. To yeah. go see the uh, casino yeah. rails. Yeah, yes. that's a good one. That's a good one. Oh, mm -hmm. big time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good one. What about you? Places you've been and places you want to go still. Okay, place I've been... Um, favorite was, I guess, being on set at Quantum of Solace uh, opera scene. In, uh, in the opera yes. scene. That was a great location because I was there. <laughs> During the filming, the By the way, you, you just answered um, Matt Paulson's question for oh. you, which is where do you find opportunities to wear tuxedos? He, <laughs> yeah, he becomes know. an extra in a James Bond film, <laughs> okay? At the opera <laughs> scene, at the opera scene where you have to wear a tuxedo. <sighs> yeah. So that was, the, that was probably the best where, you know, for me personally, uh, where I would like to go, Jamaica. Ah, uh, yes. I haven't been there. That would be great. And yeah. there's some beautiful Love areas. So um, uh, there's a question for you. Sweet. Uh, how and where can we hear the Being James Bond podcast? Wherever you find podcasts, iTunes, Stitcher, just do a search for Being James Bond. You'll find it. It'll 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 come right up. Absolutely. And then when you do, do yourself a favor because this is what I've learned. Um, turn on the notifications mm -hmm. because instead of like going, oh, I wonder if a new one's up, you literally get an email that says a new one's up, or you get some sort of no notification. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, which is great. Maybe Matt B. You asked it before, Matt. I saw your question coming by before. Uh, you're from Manchester. Um, oh, that's a good one. Uh, you were wondering what is our favorite Bond movie score and Bond composer. Um, the reason I didn't answer earlier or didn't pick it up is like it's one of my weak weak points. Oh. I, I don't know that much about Mo uh, the sound. The sound, like yeah. I, I wouldn't, you know, like I'm, I'm. It's not one of my focus. Well, points. name name um, a movie that you really like so, yeah, the score. I, I can I can answer which movie I like the yes. score, but I wouldn't, you know, I like Casino Royale. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's really... David Arnold. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, it goes really well together with the movie. Yeah. Uh, the whole movie, of course, has this huge, you know, um, arc of, like, you know, um, excitement and... and that's slow. true. And so that, that's one that comes to mind. But, like, again, like, it, I'm not that into it, so I can't answer properly. Okay. That's all I have. This is Bond music. So, um, your favorite Bond movie score and your, um, your favorite Bond composer. Wow. Um, that's a tough one. The Bond composer's tough. Um, soundtrack, The Living Daylights, that's one, I can listen to that one any day of the week. Um, 
that one is kind of so multifunctional. Um, In a dysfunctional way. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's, I mean, I put it this way. There's, there's bonds that I want to listen to uh, for the Adrenaline Rush, and David Arnold has that in spades. Um, he does so many great soundtracks. Casino Royale is a fantastic soundtrack. Um, Honor Master Secret Service is a great one. A Beautiful Kill is a great one. And Living Daylights is definitely one of my favorites. Okay, Rodrigo, I know you tried before. I'm going to ask you a question of these two guys. We're going to start with Remmer. What would Bond wear in tropical weather like Brazil? He already has sunspell polos. They work great. But pants are hard to wear in the summer, for example. So what would Bond wear in tropical weather? What should he be wearing? I mean, the first thing that comes to mind for me is linen pants. But I mean, somehow that's, you know... I like that. That's a, a good answer. Bit, a little bit. I, I, I yeah. picture a little bit maybe, you know, the Pierce Brosnan Cuba outfit style. Mm. Yeah. Know, something like that. that something light. Yeah, what about you, Joe? Uh, that's a great question. I'm not, honestly, I'm not sure. And I would probably refer to you for that one. I, I hear... Um, I mean, assuming you're not in any kind of jungle area mm. um, with mosquitoes yeah so yeah I'm not really something sure. something like all right this is this is one for Remmer mm. Remmer your site was the first site I came across when I got serious about bond and used your site as an encyclopedia for identifying items mm. where did you start this whole thing mm, great where question. did it begin it began I guess the accessories uh, cufflinks DuPont that's, that's what has been you know somehow for me that's that's close to my heart um I, I started looking at that and th that for me was represented you know the bond lifestyle uh in the beginning the most you know like the small details it's all in the details the little you know expensive little you know sort of really super luxury like monaco mm -hmm. uh, th that whole feeling of like you know south of france somehow that that was my image and then i, I started looking around and i came to like you know all these sort of products that fit in that. And I was like, this, this for me is Bond lifestyle, you know? And, yeah. and it grew really fast from there. So it, it trickled down quickly to the uh, the red case from, um, uh, you know, Swain Aideny Brick for oh, yeah, yeah. Love, yeah. like stuff like that. Mm. All basically accessories you would use, you know, yes. practical stuff. Um, and from there, it went really quickly into, yeah, just like the craziness it is now. It's like everything. Like but, a germ and it's But it almost play. started like a little yeah. bit like that little spark of, um, yeah, I love it. I didn't. What even year know that. was it that yeah. you started your site? Uh, two thousand five. Uh, so it was oh, a year wow. be exactly, yeah. exactly, actually the week that Daniel Craig was announced. Oh, uh, that's funny, when, I, yeah. when I went online. So it was really around that time because. Um, yeah. And is it true that we're, him wearing a life vest on a buoy was your motivation? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah <right? laughs> I thought this can't be true. No, this can't. Be true. All right, this no. one's for Joe. Um, which Bond film do you think has the best cinematography? Which one looks the best to you? Oh wow, the that's. Movies? Good question, though. Yeah, I tell you what, I, I almost feel like, it, like you should probably ask that question and say, other than Skyfall, because I feel like Skyfall easily has the best cinematography. I mean, Roger, Roger Deakins did that one, and it's just gorgeous. Um, so other than that one, that's a great question. And, um, hmm. Got to name one. I, you know you what, I might, even, I might even go with Casino Royale, because honestly, there are so many great shots in that one. I just love that one. I mean, I, you know, I, I kind of feel like Bahamas does half of the work, maybe. Yeah. Because, the, I mean, the gorgeous water and everything, there's so many beautiful shots that I can think of. It is amazing. It, it all, and, and again, it works with the music so well. So, yeah, I would say, again, Skyfall, far and away, I think it's probably the best looking film. Okay, Remert, this one's for you. It's a multi-part question because it's two people's questions. I'm combining them. What would Bond wear at a fancy dress party? And where do you find public events that allow you to dress and act like Bond? And I guess they want it more than just acting in quantum of solace. So what would Bond wear to a, a, a fancy dress party? Not necessarily a tuxedo. That's a good question. <laughs> that's a hard one. <laughs> Dark colored suit, maybe. I, I yeah. guess, yeah. So would he, would he wear yeah. a white shirt or a blue shirt? Some people would say white. I'm just trying to visualize it in my mind, yeah. Um, just, just, yeah, beyond the tuxedo. Like, uh, yeah, I'm drawing a blank here. Um, I think, yeah, for the, for the, for the, for the where, can you, where can you wear your stuff is... Mm -hmm. is you got a, a lot of times it's bond related events funny enough like i i see a lot of you know events that we go to we've yeah. been to that somehow we have to bring our tuxedo right that's true so it's it's a lot even of the washington one we decided to it's, dress it's up just go to like yeah. a few movie premieres you can actually just wear it for fun to any james bond movie premiere in your town it doesn't have to be the main one yeah you'll look um, the part you'll look you'll you, you get away with it i did that yeah uh, you know you can the, do that. the secret is not 
this is so important with anything in life, not getting embarrassed. Who the cares <laughs> yeah, yeah. what yeah. people yeah. think? I mean, you do what you do, and mm -hmm. don't worry about what people think. William Easton, being James Bond, wants uh, he wants to know, heard you did the Golden Eye Bungee. Yeah. Really want to hear that True. story. Great book, by the way. Is this oh, your brother? You. Um, <laughs> tell us, tell us, thanks, um, Dad. Conjugated yeah. view of, of the bungee jump. How did you get there? Oh, oh my god, god. off the hook. Um, yeah, the short version it's, it's a two parter because the first time I actually tried to go, I was in Geneva for a business trip. Tried to drive from Geneva the morning I landed, thinking that this is back in the MapQuest days. Yeah, drove all the way across the country thinking it would take me like two or three hours. Took like seven hours and then oh, I had to drive back again. Awful. Um, never made the jump. Next year went back, planned it better. Um, it's not that far from Lake Como. So yeah. it ended up being yes, like sir. a little mini Lake Como weekend. And then I just took a drive up to the bunny jump. Unbelievable. Mm. It is, I mean, it is off the hook. I'm jealous. It's, I mean, it is literally, it's 750 feet tall. It's, it's roughly the size of the Chrysler building. So no joke. So I mean, it, that is a serious bunny jump, but it is well worth it. I remember this one's for you. Have you ever done anything that Bond hasn't done? And but you thought to yourself, "Ooh, this is such a Bond thing. Bond would love this." Good questions, yeah. Um, maybe a hotel that you went to, or an, an experience that you've done. You're like, "This is such a Bond moment." That's, that's a hard one. I guess something that Bond would be. <laughs> you you were <laughs> like, oh, do. yeah," or oh, maybe man. a place you walked in and it's like, "God, this is such a Bond place." <laughs> That's hard. Besides my base. Because I'm only doing a bond dust, so I don't know. <laughs> <what I'm doing. laughs> that's, that's a good answer. I'm standing on like the Sugarloaf Mountain in Rio, and I'm like, this is what bond did. And he's like, yeah, he, he doesn't have to look up to me. I, I don't know, yeah. I can think of something for that. I remember years ago, if you asked me like 15 years ago, I was in Costa Rica and I did zip lining before anybody else ah. was doing it. Mm. Now it's like the most common thing ever. Like everybody zip lines. But, but like back then, I remember. Did you do that in uh, Moonraker in Rio? He did zip lining on the. Uh, Oh, yeah, okay, okay. Right, with the chain. Right. Yeah, right, I'm with on. you, I'm with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, by the way, this is this is a really good one. Um, so, for all of you, your next location trip where we the fans can attend, or your next event where we the fans can attend. So, um, is being James Bond going to be doing something that may be uh, fans? Well, I, well, I will, I have things coming up, sure. Um, I will be in Portugal and Switzerland for yeah. the Honor Majesty yeah. Secret Service 50th anniversary, which I'm and there'll be a lot of really fans jonesing there. for. Yeah, yeah, a lot of fans are going to be there. Um, mm -hmm. As far as things like, hey, meet me there, not sure what, what's coming down the pipe, yeah. really, other than that. Um, what about you, Ryan? No, I guess the week around the premiere in London will always be fun, even if you yeah. don't go to premiere. Yeah, that's um, true. Just come to London anyway. Um, right. There's going to be a lot of people. There's going to be a lot of, you know, yeah. um, people from websites, from the blogs, from the, yeah. you know, from the podcast. So there's always stuff to do in London, even if you don't go to the yeah. actual premiere. And there's even like viewings around town as well. Um, so I would book your ticket ready for the week around eight yeah. April. I mean, really, like seriously. Like, yeah, I, I agree. Just to make sure yeah. it's... Uh... Just in case. Yeah. I, I have a wish list with that. I um, So two things. First of all, I would love to do similar to what I did in New York City with some of the brands, but in London. Mm. Okay. So yeah, I would oh, love, yeah, I'd yeah, love yeah. to get some of the people around London, the yeah. fans to connect, even if it's an evening of just getting together and having some drinks and yeah, telling, telling some war stories. But the other thing that I'd love to do is um, once, once the premiere has happened, I'd love something even back here in the States where we could have some sort of uh, like almost like a mini premiere. Mm. And maybe we do it for like charity or something like that. But Ooh, we have nice. Bond fans oh, get yeah. together yeah. and maybe some of the brands like, you know, help with sponsorship and they all kind of get together. And it's mm. a, it's just a fan premiere. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. not like Johnny and Joe off the street. It is Joe off mm. the street. <laughs> it, but it's, it's like people that are just uh, fans of Let's the see, social yeah. media yeah, stuff yeah. and they yeah. all come together in a local yeah. place in, I don't care, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, New York, it doesn't matter. Mm. Um, mm. Brooklyn. And... They just connect together. Yeah. You know, we just do something. Yeah, um, a friend of ours, actually, uh, Ray, from the Bond Armory, is oh, hosting yeah, an yeah. event in August. <clears throat> Very true. And so Ray, like usual, uh, posts the information. But if you read on here, Ray is having, uh, and I believe that's going to be in Maryland. Mm -hmm. So that would be uh, very interesting. Yeah, and that's a great one, too, because it's he's kind of action-oriented. He's a uh, trip to the range. He's got, like, a driving portion. Yes. And then, like, indoor skydiving. So it's like... 
Yeah, it's truly like an experiential yeah. event. Sure. And James Rowling, yeah, it, this would be like a Bond experience meets like, I, I mean, I would love to have all of my friends from social media connect. It wouldn't be mm -hmm. the, the Bond experience. It would just be all of us kind of connecting okay. yeah, together. Yeah, yeah. Because I think uh, you may have noticed more and more, whether it's the James Bond Complex or so many of these other groups, um, we're starting to collaborate. I mean, mm -hmm. the word is collaboration. Yeah. So it's not just, mm -hmm. oh, I'm a fan of this or a fan of that. It's like everybody's mm -hmm. coming together. Yeah. Uh, somebody asked about favorite quotes. Uh, funny, oh. funny, jo funny, funny uh, jokes. You know? uh, favorite funny joke in a Bond film. You got one? Um, I was just thinking. Uh, I came up with my friends recently. The uh, it's it's really you can't you can't do it anymore. Those kind of jokes. But like Sean Connery, you know, um, oh. with the girl saying like, oh, you know, they tell me my arms too big, and <laughs> Sean Connery says like, oh, it's just the right size for me. Or for me, yeah, I, yeah, I mean, that, <laughs> that is good. That is good stuff. You know? <laughs> but like, but it's it's a part of history and it's part of Bond know, yeah, to have sure, those yeah. quotes. You yeah, can't absolutely. be like. But we're not going to see that that kind of joke anymore. Uh, I think no. in the new movie, you know. Right, right. Um, yeah. But they're still fun, so funny now. Also, partly because they're really mm. funny, and secondly now because it's so long. Yeah, but it's so right, good. Right. You know, like I love that kind of stuff. If you watch yeah. the Sean Connery movies, there's That's so many totally. good quotes in Sean Connery movies in a way. Oh, totally. Like they're they're amazing. You know. I I, I love um, all the Pierce Brosnan ones from Goldeneye that have to do with Famke Jensen. Mm. Um, on a oh, yeah, yeah. Whether yeah, it's you know with a twist and she's turning the thing, like it's almost yes, like the yes. visual yeah, humor yeah, behind yeah. it. But yeah. I, I gotta say, you know, mm. the the one where he finds the guy dead and he's like, uh, and then well, she goes flying up and he goes, she always did enjoy a good squeeze. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, yeah. just those little yeah. things are so quick. Yeah, yeah. What about you? Favorite quote? Um, just as far, just I mean, this is not a suggestive one, but I mean, for some reason, this one always when um. An octopus, yeah, after the um, the safari, after they've been ch tracking him through the jungle, and he and he runs into the uh, the boat, the tour boat, and he climbs in, and are you with our group? No, man, we're with the economy <laughs> oh, tour. Oh, that is great. Yeah, yeah. That one, that one always hits me. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is funny. I love that one. Um, one Jeep cam asks, "This one's for you, David. Read somewhere you're a hero for saving some people from drowning. Is that true? Truth. It true is. Story. And I'll keep it really short. I'm gonna try." Um, this was when I was very young. Uh, I was in upstate New York. We were driving around a lake. I was with my wife and my kids and we literally outside of the lake, it was like January. So it was all frozen. We see these lights coming from in the lake and a mother and her two little children had driven off an embankment and smashed through the ice and the car was sinking and this had just happened. So we pulled over, nobody else was around. And, um, I jumped in got out of the car, took off my jacket, jumped in and literally um, broke through the ice and just started to drown. So lest you think this is like a really pretty hero story, it's not, it was awful. I l hit the bottom of the lake, jumped up, broke through, hit the bottom of the lake, jumped up, and I was literally like leapfrogging my way to the car. Oh, okay. Like drowning, yeah, yeah. sinking, drowning, oh. sinking. Got to the car, the mother was hysterical, we got the door open as the car was sinking and um, she said, take my babies, please. And I knew that if the mother was in the car, she would have drowned and died. So I said, you're all coming with me. This was horrible. I grabbed the two kids. The mother jumps on my back and we all just sink to the bottom of the lake. Whoa, and so crazy. I push up and we break through and we push up and we did that till we got back to the shore. And uh, that's an amazing story. I didn't know that. They were taken to the hospital, mm -hmm. but they were okay. And, and actually I just uh, reconnected with the mother and saw pictures well, of the I girls. I was just going to ask you. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. So we were written up in like, you know, magazines, like Women's Day magazine. They did all this like press. It was, it was kind of fun. But mm. honestly, it was like one of those things like I don't see it as a hero moment. I think anybody that has a beating heart would have done it. But if you had seen it, you'd be like, that guy is the worst rescuer in the world. <laughs> it was, they would never make a Bond moment about that. It was just... Still, awesome. amazing story. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, it was really Respect. crazy. Okay. Will we ever see Bond as an old man coming out of retirement? Oh, like a flash forward, or, or like actually yeah. in real time, or like right? never, Sitting... never again. Yeah. <laughs> oh, snap! <laughs> Take that. Yeah, what do you guys think? Will we ever see like uh, uh, you know, you guys, come around, kids? I want to tell you about my adventures at MI6. Yeah. No. Uh, I, I'm looking more like like I guess I guess again, one of the opportunities that. We're maybe thinking of what, what people said was maybe in Skyfall uh, having, um, you know, um, McKay, McKay, what's it? Uh, McKay. McKay. Uh, oh, be, yeah. Be yeah. like, be like Sean Connery, played by Sean Connery or something. Yeah, you know, yeah. like a definite oh, throwback, yeah. you know, where you have like right, old, right. like him being sort of the father of mm. Bond. That would like, be, that would be cool. a really subtle one. It would fit perfect, have, would have fit perfectly, I yeah. think, mm. you know. Um, oh, I like that. But 
like an actual uh, old Bond, I don't think so. I think they would only go younger in one, anyway, you know, if they go yeah. anywhere. There was a short story someone wrote a long time ago, and I, it was like something, I, I found this online, and I wish I knew who did this or what. It was basically a short story about James Bond in retirement living in Jamaica, just mm. sort of a day in the life little story. Oh, okay. yeah. oh cool. That's he, cool. He reads the Gleaner, et cetera, et cetera. He gets a letter from the daughter of Pussy Galore, who reaches out, finds him, and sends him a letter that her mother had written that never never mailed it. So we got the, and it was really terrific. It really oh, wow. was great. You, can so, you find that for us? I, I wish I could. This oh. is going back a long time. I, I, could, I couldn't find it. Okay. So this crazy. is a flash forward in five years. Like Disney has been, has taken over the James Bond franchise. <laughs> oh, here we go. And, um, they have, have all these spin-offs of yeah. like, you know, LBGT uh, <laughs> characters, uh, a lesbian, Money Penny spin-off, whatever. Uh -huh. And also one really old Bond, and that series will only be played on Netflix in old people's homes and people like us when we're old and we're watching that, you know, and that's going like, to be like a murder she wrote. Like murder she wrote. Yeah. 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 Wait, yeah. I'm sorry. I'll watch that now. Yeah. 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 Just, yeah. Every, yeah. Everything you just named, yeah. I'm going to put that right up with Game of Thrones. Yeah, it's like, uh, this is a good one. Um, are you guys familiar with um, JBR Radio, Tom and Chris? Yeah. Are you know, guys ever yeah. catching up? Um, they're planning to go to um, Honor Majesty's Secret Service 50. Yeah. Too? Yeah. He's going. Um, I am a huge fan of, of Chris and Tom. Mm. Great guys. Uh, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I listen to all their podcasts. Mm -hmm. I was actually very sad when I heard that they're taking a hiatus until summer because Chris is yeah. moving and mm -hmm. they're going on a lot of trips. I was like, no, <laughs> I need more podcasts. JBR yeah. is my absolute commuter special. I listen to this guy too a lot, but he's got a big head. Um, but I, I like, I, you know what I like about them? It's what's happening now. I like the chemistry between the two. Mm. They're very yeah. different yeah. individuals. Yeah. They don't mm. sit there and agree with each other. Um, Chris yeah. is very different than Tom. Tom's mm. different than Chris. But they generally seem like best friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's yeah. not like a slob. Yeah, yeah. It really, you know, it's funny too because they do long podcasts too. So I mean, like, some there's sometimes yes. when like they'll start it and I gotta just finish it another time. But it really does feel like just sitting down with friends. Like, it's, it, yeah, it feels yeah. like a, a a Friday night conversation. Like again, not not like this one. Like, so yeah, it's a lot of, it, it, there's almost like an instant camaraderie when you're listening to them. Yeah, absolutely. Um, wasn't that a short story by Kingsley Amos, what you just said? It, it maybe, I don't know. I, I mean, again, I, I don't think so, because I, I feel like I've never seen it since. Um, but maybe, I mean, if you know something, yeah. send me a, send me a line, because I'd love yeah. to see it again. Peter Knight, I'm going to change your question a little bit, because I want to love it for these guys. Uh, he says, who else loves the feeling walking out of the cin cinema after watching a Bond movie? Tell me, <laughs> Remmer, we're going to start with you. What is your typical feeling when you're walking out of, the, out of a Bond movie? Some people walk a little taller. They feel like they could like beat up the person next to them. Like, what do you feel like? Yeah, no, I do have the feeling. I have the feeling not only walking out of a Bond movie, you know, like feeling, you know, but also reading, reading the Bond books is actually mm. something I would recommend. Yes. Uh, if you're actually going somewhere, um, if you read the books, the you know the Fleming books like you you get that I get that feeling if I go somewhere and you read and you stop reading and you're still in the story that that mm -hmm. stays with you so yes. you go within that mood you go into like your life and you see world as Fleming describes it looking at the details looking mm -hmm. at the good stuff and like or in, in you know I, I think movies can do that but the books for me do that um, in a more subtle like a really that. good way yeah. so that, that that's my tip to great answer to, to just yeah. read books and you get the same feeling and, uh, I love yeah. that no. yeah. what, what about you Joe hey, great um, answer I mean that, yeah, that's that phenomenal awesome. I completely agree there's something about reading those books especially when you're trying if you're getting on an airplane don't do it without a without a Fleming book I mean it's, it's yeah. so yeah. great yeah. Um, as far as movies go it's, it's, it's interesting because it honestly very much depends on the movie but I will say that I when I saw Casino Royale Wow, did I stand four inches taller every yeah, time? Yeah, I mean, I I, I literally mm -hmm. remember one yeah, time, yeah. my my friend Scott, who I do the the podcast with, uh, we I remember one night we saw it together, and I li I literally remember walking out, walking into we were going to a restaurant afterwards to 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 chat afterwards, and I remember kind of just like my posture was all the way here, my shoulders are back, whatever, and it was it was like so, I caught myself doing it. It wasn't I didn't do it intentionally, yeah. but like I caught myself doing it. And I was like. What is this all about? All this? <laughs> yeah, you were just I so like it. You were so pumped up after. Oh my god! Uh, this is really good. Have you, Have you guys seen Dutch Bond fans' videos? I think he's the best Bond recapper on YouTube from EO. Um, I I love his stuff. Um, and I actually I have to tell you, I just started watching him maybe a few months ago. Yeah. But he's really good. Um, 
I, I love the way he edits. I love the way he kind of sums everything up. He's got a very strong opinion. Mm. Uh, like it's not a weak opinion. He, if he doesn't like something, you know it. If he doesn't like something, yeah. he knows it. Are you familiar, Dutch Bond? Uh, I only saw one. I think I, I think you told me about him or something. But there was somebody, but I, I I didn't. I must admit, I will. He's really good. JD JD Sutton says, uh, "I'll never forget forget walking out of Spy back in the day." Oh yeah, that must be good. Yeah, that, that's that's pretty great one. Yeah. Well, Casino, okay. uh, um, the Yojim, but. Yo oh, yeah, Jimbo. My God, Jimbo. Six. <laughs> Casino Royale, I felt great walking out. Quantum, not so much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know who Yo Jimbo is. Lloyd Nance, walking out of Spectre, highly disappointing. Yep. Hopefully walking yeah. out of B25, right. be better. That's the thing. We, yeah. the, the movie's like, right, again, it depends on the movie. So. It depends on the movie, yeah. right? Like Spectre and Nate versus a different feeling yeah. because you're just like more like, what? How, why? But yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah. <laughs> Any news on Secret <laughs> Cinema? And then Ray says... David, when you find out your role in Secret Cinema, are you going to tell everyone or let it be a surprise? My role? I'll tell you right now. And, Brady, this is a big bit of news. The street sweeper from Quantum of Solace that isn't actually sweeping anything, <laughs> that's going to be me. I, I, yeah. He just kind of hovers yeah. above yeah. the pavement. You remember that guy? Yeah. Oh, my yeah. God. I love that guy. John Riggs. Love that feeling also. But... Am I the only fan that's frustrated that the films are coming out so infrequently? Yeah, no, that's true. Yeah, you lose the momentum. Mm, for five sure, years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, indeed, it's crazy. I mean, yeah. No. What about yeah. you? Yeah, it's. I mean, it's. I mean, seriously. I, I. I remember thinking recently, like you know, like imagine you took your your twelve year old to see the last Bond film. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah. you would be taking him again at seventeen Ooh, to yeah, the next right. one. Yeah, like, no, it's a good. And he's yeah. probably not even talking to you at that point. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> seventeen. Yeah. Yeah, so, right, hey, right. you want to go see the bonnet? Yeah. Paul yeah. Lally um, says, when I walked out of Octopussy as a nine-year-old, I jumped on the bonnet, you can tell he's from the UK, uh, of my parents' car. I was Bond. No, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. You do. Yeah. You, yeah. I tell you, when you walk out of yeah. a Bond movie, mm -hmm. even, even if I watch a Bond movie like on a plane, if I'm traveling really far yeah. and I watch yeah. a Bond movie, mm -hmm. for the time that you shut it off for a certain time after, you are swirled in that world. Mm -hmm. yes. I mean, yes. You just can't help but uh, yes. do it. Uh, Dean Dunleavy felt deflated walking out of Spectre. And that says something, because Dean's a big guy. He yeah. works out a lot. <laughs> yeah. So if he felt deflated, yeah. that's that's a bad sign. Mm -hmm. uh, be careful driving home from B25. You might speed, says Matt. Good. Very true. I'm, I'm hoping I feel like that. Very true. I mean, when I, when I listen to good music, and I think, I don't care what you drive, even an electric Aston Martin. If you hear a good <laughs> Bond song, you just you start to drive a little faster. Mm, mm, it's kind of dangerous. Yeah, yeah. All right. We have been on, believe it or not, for an hour and 47 minutes, which is just... Way too long. <laughs> Way too long. I'm sorry. We're and, sorry. And your Does it, doesn't time just stop when you do this? <laughs> totally. Your loved ones are wondering what you're going to do, but I, I do want to ask um, each of you a question. We're going to start with Joe. Um, Joe, 2019, 2020, Bond 25, etc. Mm -hmm. But what, what do we have in store for... Being James Bond, what can we expect? Uh, at the risk of being very repetitive, Volume Two is 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 definitely coming along. So, it's like the press conference. <laughs> <laughs> I, really? You know, I swear to God, it's funny you say that too, because I've had <laughs> moments where I said, "Where do I get off complaining about the lack of the Bond movies when I'm still chugging along at Volume Two and I haven't finished?" Uh, but that is absolutely coming out soon. I've got several videos in the works uh, coming out soon. Uh, a lot of travel related stuff. Uh, activity related stuff and a couple movie reviewish sort of stuff again uh next week skyfall revisited with uh, my good buddy scott uh which i'm very was very happy with how that turned out yeah. and uh, we're gonna get back into doing videos scott and i did some test footage just to make sure our cameras are working so we're gonna get cracking soon so and you you just already said you're going to portugal yeah. And you're going to Switzerland. You're going Portugal to and Switzerland. So are you going to be doing videos for us? Because we're not going to be uh, there. No. I, yeah, you know what? I will probably do some live streams now that you mention it. Yes. Uh, why the hell not? Because, I mean, you get a great... I, I don't think settings. anybody else is. And, and do some good you know? vlogs for us. I mean, uh, we're not going to get to be there, so... Oh, yeah. It'll, I, I will definitely have, like, the soup to nuts of the location. I'll try to get as much as I can. Um, maybe, both of them. maybe a conversation with Lays and me? Oh yeah, I, the 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 guest list for this thing is phenomenal. Lazenby is doing a, both if parts. If you did a vlog of each guest, you would have enough for like half a year. Oh my god, I yeah. Oh. I mean, I I don't know what the access will be necessarily. And incidentally, I'm not even sure. Like if I if I did somehow manage to get George to sit down, he might be like, "Who are you? Why am I talking to you?" Yeah. You know, you know. 
You never know. But um, yeah, I mean, just, just the location spotting alone is going to be. But you know a guy, like, so maybe you could talk to that guy. Yes, yeah. I you do know, know a guy. guy. I know, know a guy. guy. He knows a guy. Yes, I know you know a guy. guy. <laughs> All right, Remmert. Um, James Bond lifestyle. What 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 do we have to look forward to? I mean, it's always something new and wonderful going on there. But please. Well, I mean, yeah, it's it's kind of obvious, but the Bond twenty five filming has started. So mm -hmm. I mean, of course, without you know, as we said mm -hmm. earlier, like we don't want to spoil too much, but I mean, there's going to be stuff coming out. You uh, actually have, officially or not without any spoilers, you have a piece up there already, don't you? For oh, yeah, yeah, there's already one yeah. piece. There's that's really, fast. That's Is really that amazing? Piece. Yeah, that's yeah. 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 I mean, thanks to you know all the spies around there, of course. Mm. Um, but uh, besides all the Bond Twenty Five, you know, uh, stuff that's going to be amazing, of course, this year. No matter, you know, for sure, we're going to have more um, competitions. We've kind of, oh. uh, kind of have been uh, lagging in competitions the last few months, but. I have a few plans that are coming out soon, um, you know, to, you know, get some great stuff. They're always phenomenal. Uh, too. Yeah, try to get the prices, of course, always to a new level. <laughs> um, so that's going to be definitely a big thing in the coming year. And um, we'll be probably attending several events. Um, Fantastic. I'm sure there's going to be some yeah. here, here state, in the States or uh, in Europe, uh, London. One of the great things is um, Remert, uh, because of what he started and, and obviously the following, um, you've got to give them credit for this. Uh, brands, as well as people that do events, really gravitate to you. They really appreciate what you've done. So you get um, access. I think that's the best word to use mm -hmm. to a lot of those types of things. So bringing yeah. that back yeah. to all of us who might not be there physically is, is huge. It's a big deal. Yeah, I hope we can bring it a little bit, you know, close to people by, by putting up the articles and giving sort of like the experience for the people, you know, uh, yeah. via the articles. But um, yeah, I'm fortunate to be at a lot of events. And hopefully I can uh, attend many more. Sure, a lot. 25. Mm. And there's, I'm sure there's going to be a lot that we don't even know about that's coming up. And uh, That's yeah, fantastic. So stay tuned, I would say. Definitely. Nice. Wow, fantastic. Well, Incidentally, by the way, yeah, both of you guys seem to have contests going on, which is great. We do. I, I was thinking about doing one myself. Tell me if you oh. like this idea. All right. It's going to be... <laughs> there you go. <laughs> What's going on? I don't know what it's going to be yet, what the contest is going to be, but the oh. prize is going to be... You already know. Head of Section's Box of Junk. I have so much Bond stuff that oh, people like have that. given me over the years. Oh, yeah, yeah. Books, paper bags, yeah, 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 yeah. And, I, and I always try to finish the collection out. Like, I got all these, you know, this kind of books, and then I got so many extras. So I think I'm going to do something. So I don't know what you think better. of that. Is that a good idea? Yeah, maybe, 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 maybe not. Yeah. <laughs> See, that <laughs> is so cool because Robert was going to, like his next contest is for an Omega watch. But I like the box of junk better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm choosing door number one. <laughs> That's crazy. Well, guys, first of all, thank you to everybody. I cannot believe the amount of people that stayed on mm. for close to two hours. I yeah. mean, we have right, right. a full house. And at the highest time, I think we had close to 400 people on, which wow. is just insane. Nice. And the questions are still coming. We can't answer them all. I apologize. But the good news is, is this is going to be um, up permanently on our YouTube page, which is great. Um, I do want to thank, you know, Remmer and Joe. They're like my bestest of friends. And great to be here. For yeah. coming. And, you know, this is hard to do sometimes, but we figured we would just have a conversation and invite you. So, guys, thank you so much. Awesome. Love it. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah. Yeah. Remmer's great to have you, brother. Yeah, great to see you again, man. This has <laughs> been way too Oh, awful. Awesome. <laughs> little bit of a love fest. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get close to the camera so I can get to shutting off. Um, yeah. Thanks for but, joining us all. Uh, thanks for yeah. staying on. For some people, have been you know there's there since two the beginning, hours. It's just been really. Amazing. It's it's been a long time for um, people, hasn't it? Yeah. Really long, Andy. But thanks for joining, and uh, thanks for all your questions. Thanks for all your you know suggestions, and uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, great show, guys. Cheers, guys. Thank you, gentlemen. <laughs> Can't wait for more. Thank you, gents. Take care. Lots of smileys, etc. All right.